Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going blinded backwards! <laughs> <laughs> I was just, I was a bit busy there, head bump into the background. Uh, yeah, no tune! No tune, man, no tune. Um, big up to everyone in the chat. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you for joining us again, guys. Actually, I've got some guests with me today to chat everything about Liverpool. We had a chat about FSG in that article that came out in the Echo. Um, people are fuming. Um, me, I'm, I don't really can't give a shit mostly, but some people are angry, so we're going to chat about it. Um, <laughs> obviously, there's a lot of things to talk about as well today. We've got to talk about all the transfer rumours coming out, players leaving the club, apparently Newcastle eyeing up Jota, uh, Kevin Kelleher leaving, Matip leaving. Uh, and we're going to chop all that up with Enz and Fozzie. How are you doing, guys? How are you doing? Nah, big up, man, Jim. Big up. Thanks for having me on, as always. Big up to Fuzzy as well, bro. Hope you're good as well, man. It's good. I'm it's good. good. Liverpool good. winning games. Good Liverpool winning it's games. Happy bro. Days for us, it? it's ha- yeah, I'm happy, bro. I'm happy. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good, guys. Thanks for having me on, guys, honestly. Always, always a pleasure. Howdy from Nashville. Howdy to you, my friend. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Um... Yeah, so, I'm going to talk about something quickly, guys, that just broke before we went live. So, apparently, Luis Diaz. Mm -hmm. Luis Diaz Mm -hmm. is apparently in a shock contention to be ready for the game against Bournemouth on Saturday. That is the news coming out from absolutely nowhere. Um, Mm -hmm. How are we feeling about that, guys? Too soon? Do you want him to see him back? How are we feeling about that, Ince? He's he's um he's been back training. Obviously, he's not been a part of the team. I think hopefully it was this week. Um, he was they said he was going to be a part of the full um team sessions. But you already know what Klopp likes to see. He likes to see you take part in at least three, four sessions, full sessions, before he even thinks about getting you into the team. Look, even if he's on the bench and we don't play him, it's cool just to have him have him there. It, it's a little buzz for the boys just to see him back. And if we need him, we can you know give him 10, 15 minutes. It's yeah, always a positive yeah, thing. Yeah. Well, you're obviously because a lot of people are about, and some people are upset about this dude. They didn't want to see him again till next season. I think he's being rushed back. Wait, what's your feelings mm-hmm. on it? Uh, it's, it's up to the manager, isn't it? And uh, we have still got uh, like a lot to fight for this season, don't we? Like the top four. I still believe we could do something. Hopefully, against Real Madrid, maybe he'd be he'd be like on the bench for that one. Um, mm-hmm. Listen, if we get two goals in the first half, anything's possible after that, isn't it? Like we could get one in the second half against Real Madrid. You never know, innit? So, but with, with Diaz, um, well, I don't know. We got, we got two goals in the first half last time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there, there, there you go. But listen. Mm. But the thing is, Jamie, the best thing about it is we've got strength and depth now. Like you could see it in abundance in the bench. The bench looks different now, doesn't it, compared to the yeah. other games we played? And uh, that's the most important thing. Like it will put those players on their toes now, and then they they will perform even better. If you know what I mean? If they're worried about their position, that means you know they have to do that extra harder on the pitch. And um, with Diaz coming back, uh, I don't think the Klopp Klopp will learn from the past mistakes he done with him. Like uh, mm. when he when he took him to Dubai and he got injured. So I, I'm sure they won't rush him that that quickly, man. Yeah. I mean, with the injury stuff, I don't always blame that on Klopp all the time. Because if his medical staff are telling you, yeah, guess what? Diaz is fit and he's ready to join team training again in a few days, boss. Then Klopp's yeah. going to go, great. I'll get him back in team training. Let's get him set up. In. He ain't going like, to not trust what his staff are telling him. So yeah. I don't always blame Jürgen for that. That's like the medical staff need like, massively looking at anyway. We know this. But look, I'm, if, he's part, if he can be part of training team training this week towards the end of the week it's just gotta mm-hmm. give a lift to the boys ain't it because he's obviously well liked he's a quality yeah. footballer you've got a quality player coming back into your squad it's, it's gonna perk you up you've just beaten your arch rival 7-0 you're feeling yourselves at the moment and, you know it's just gonna give you it's gonna give you more energy going into games and also it keeps keeps players on their toes as well don't it you know Darwin yeah. Gakpo we're looking over their shoulder like oh Diaz is back now. Okay, all right. Got to keep myself, you know, got to keep myself on my toes. Keep going. Can't let my can't let my game drop because there's a quality <laughs> player who wants to take my spot. Yeah, simple as that. Thanks. And we want and we want a squad. So we? we want a squad. Yeah. And this bring this brings yeah. me to my next point as well. So a lot of people talk about our squad depth. And when we played Man United on the weekend, you know, their substitutions to our substitutions. I didn't think there was. 
you know, they brought on, I think, like a McTominay and a Langer uh, and Ganacho. Mm-hmm. We brought on Stefan Vysic, uh Jota and Bobby Firmino. Mm. So a lot's made of our uh, squad depth ends, but yes, we need some players in. There's no doubt about it. But the squad ain't as weak as I think a lot of people think it is. It it did look that way because we had the, so the many thing, players is... injured as well, innit? So that's probably why. Um, that's it, it did yeah, look that way. Cool. We had a, we had way too many guys injured. So now we're getting yeah, everyone exactly. back. Obviously, we still got Thiago to get back as well because you know yeah. seeing him on the bench as well is a, is a good sign. Diaz back on the bench as well. Um, it's, it's, that's another good um, plus for us as well. So, yeah, man, uh, it's, it's all good. I think all the players are coming back at the right time. I don't know if you guys listened to the... Um, Trent did an interview because he um, he did that opening for the Under Armour sh- um, shop in uh, Liverpool, their oh, flagship store. Mm. Um, yeah, and he, they asked him a few questions. And I think he was just along the lines of everyone now is focused on, the, on, on what they need to achieve. Because he said sometimes you could be halfway through the season and you're kind of... You don't know which target to really chase down and we're kind of like okay can we go and win the prem are we in the right position for top four we can we go for the cups can we go for the champions league i think now they've kind of gone right we're at all the cups obviously the champions league one we, we'll discuss that when it comes to that but when it comes to now the vision where we're going having all the players back to push for that top four i think they all now know this is what we want to go and achieve so now, man, I'm I'm happy to see what kind of substitution we can now bring off the bench. Just imagine if we had Diaz and Thiago on the bench, because mm-hmm. I mentioned to um, Savage as well about it. So I can imagine Thiago coming on now in the game when it's like all over the place. Oof. He just comes on and controls the game. We're like five, six nil up and he comes on just to kill the game off and still create <laughs> chances. Crazy man, it's frightening. It's frightening the bench, isn't it? Like if you if, if you think about it. But the be- the best thing about all of this, we don't have to rush these players back. We've got enough for now. You know what I mean, like until like they they fully fit again to to play for the team. And um, um, yeah, I think I think I think I think we'll get top four this season if if we just continue. If you look at like like was it four or five results uh, yeah. in the last few games, it, it looks good. Obviously, the Palace one was the was the issue, um, but. Listen, we didn't lose that game. That's the most important thing. But like, yeah, we're, 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 we're climbing up that table. We're, I think we're pushing up for third. I don't think we're pushing for fourth anymore. I think that Man United's confidence will go down now. And mm-hmm. I think we could catch them up. Seven points, it's not bad, is it? Like, with the games like to go at the moment. No, and mm-hmm. look, talking about the squad. So, obviously, there's a news circulating today about uh, one Diogo Jota. Um, apparently... Newcastle are very, very interested in him. I can see why. He's a good player. Now, I don't want Jota sold. I'm going to make this perfectly clear. I nah. do not want Jota sold, right? Mm-hmm. But if a, bid, yeah. if a bid comes in, like an 80, like the rumours is a 70, 80 million pound bid coming from Newcastle. That's the rumours. Is that too hard to turn down for a player like Diogo Jota? Knowing how yeah. we're run as well uh... as a football club. Some will say take it, but he's at the right age, man. I don't think it's the right moment to kind of get rid of a player like Jota. Um, because we're going to... we what Liverpool, Liverpool are in a situation right now, and I get it. In the summer, we're going to have to have a clear out. Makes sense. Rebuild. But at the same time, you can't really get rid of too many of the players because then you're going to have too many new players. Um, I think he's yeah. a player that we definitely need to keep. Hopefully, those rumours are, are stupid rumours anyway. Most likely, they are. Um, but... Look, he's, I want him at Liverpool. I'm sure all of us here want him at Liverpool. But I get it. A lot of money, by the way, we, we're run as a club. Yes. <laughs> knowing, knowing, knowing us, we'll probably end up taking it. But hopefully not, man. Well, it says here, Liverpool... No, no, we, do- we, we can't. We can't go, on, mate. go on, Fazek. No, no, go, go on, Jim. Go on, Jim. Sorry. I was just saying, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Liverpool, uh, go on. Mm-hmm. Go on, my earphones uh, no, no, playing no, up. You no, talk, no. you talk. Your two, my earphones playing up. You yeah, look... Um, ends I, I, with Jota, he's different to the players we got, mate. You know, what I mean, he's yeah. more direct, he's more pacey. The, the only thing is, how serious is his injuries? That's what we need to know. You know what I mean, because he, they don't know. That's that's the thing. Like, I think they 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 keep rushing him back with his injuries and all that stuff. And um, is he injury? Is he gonna be an injury prone player? Like, are we gonna have to rely on him like we used to, like storage? 
You know what I mean? Things like that. We don't want things like that to happen to him. So that's what worries me about uh, uh, at the moment. Is he too injury prone, or is he going to be consistent in the future when you know the likes of you know Salah and all them go? Is he going to be the ones going to be there constant in that team? I get your point. At, at the same mm. time, I think it's just the way we play as a team and the way that we we kind of coach in the training methods. And I think mm. I think the manager and his coaching staff will probably look into that because. I'm sure they're aware we're getting way too many mus muscular injuries. So mm. I'm sure they're probably working on something. You know, I'll give them, I'll give them that. I'm sure when we can't just be sitting here as mm. let's say non yeah. or whatever. We're just mm. they must see that, bro. We've had way too many hamstrings, quads, calf muscle injuries. It, it's it over the course of Big Clock being here. So <laughs> you know, hopefully once we change that, that hopefully happen, then we'll yeah. see we'll see guys like um Jota not be, you know, because I get it. People are probably looking at him as an injury-prone player. I don't think he is. I just think he's just very mm -hmm. unlucky. And yes, you're right. We do. We have a tendency of rushing players back. But I think when we have a big squad, that's why I think yeah. Diaz has had enough time to recover now. He's had time because we don't need him back. Gapo, we've got Gapo fit. Bobby's fit. Jota's fit. Uh, Nunes is fit. Salah's fit. So we don't need to rush these guys back. And I think um, even when Jota came back, we didn't rush him back onto the pitch. Yeah. 20 minutes there, 20 minutes there. Then he got a half, then he got a full game. And that's the way we have to do to manage these players back in, man. Yeah, but don't get me wrong, I don't want to sell him. I don't, you know what I mean, I think he's, he's going to be a vital part for our future. What is he, 25, 26? We need those yeah, type of players in the yeah. team, innit? I mean, yeah. especially when they, like, they did the likes of Nunes and um, Gapo did, what, 23, something, uh, something along those lines. You know what I mean? So yeah, Gap, if you have a like, 25 year old and things like that, that that's that's brilliant like to have in the team. And uh, he will like, help them out. As they go, as they come along and become even like uh, important players in the future as well, yeah, yeah. I don't want to sell him, but it's just the injuries that really scares me about him. Like, how often is it going to happen? So we'll just have to keep an eye on that. But eighty million, I don't know, Jamie. I don't know. I don't know. Eighty million, mate. Yeah, it's a lot of money. It is, but, isn't it? Yeah, it, de it depends yeah, on the crop, isn't it? We've got to remember who we own by as well. You know, it, it, <laughs> you know, you have to. You know, we have a way. You know, we. The way we do business, you know, eighty million for Jota is a lot of money. And Martha, are, are, is anyone worried about Jota? Because no. you know you've got Darwin in right now, who is getting mm -hmm. better as the season goes on. And like we're all massive Darwin fans, we can see the the big picture in Darwin. You know, you've got Gakpo in there, who's really starting to settle down and looks mm -hmm. a player. You know, you know what we paid for him, the potential he has. Um. You've got Luis Diaz coming back. We know Klopp absolutely loves and he's probably number one left back, uh, left winger, sorry. And then you've got Mo who's Mo, you know, who's going to play. So, Jota obviously hasn't scored since last April. Obviously, injuries are part of that reason as well. But mm -hmm. are, are we just a little bit maybe worried in what where the pecking order is for Jota right now? And is Jota maybe looking at that himself? Is he, like, the rumours is the reason Bobby's leaving is because Bobby mm -hmm. saw the pecking order and realised he's ain't not going to play much, and he he knows he can go somewhere and probably play quite a lot of games. So that's yeah. the reason he's not signing his deal. So are we looking at Jota maybe thinking, you know, when players get injured, the team can't stand still for a player to come exactly. back. Yeah, exactly. You know, the team has 100%. to evolve. It happened to the Ox. You know, the Ox mm -hmm. was a very good player. Now, when we first got him in, he had a great first season, got that injury. Mm -hmm. The team didn't yeah, stay yeah. still waiting for him. It moved on. You know, and and you wonder with Jota, the team moved on. You know, Wiley's been injured. You know, Gakpo's coming. Darwin's improved. Luis Diaz is probably going to play in front of Jota on that left side in a way. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. where's Jota? Where do we see Jota's positioning? Where do we see him? What? Where in the pecking order do we see him? So if this deal come like, mm -hmm. so are we talking about how it's not like Liverpool won't sell him? But is Jota going to be looking at himself and thinking, ah? Oh, where am I going to play next season? This this will be this will be a test to him and see where he believes he needs to be. Because I think, yes, you're right. He probably looks at the pecking order and go, right, okay, I'm I'm probably like fourth choice now in terms of the attackers. But at the same time, I'm at Liverpool. Anything anything apart from Liverpool is, is a step down. It's whether or not he's already made the step up. He's at he's at a club that's got the heritage there for let's say league but titles, let's say Champions League. So why would he want to take the, another step backwards? The the thing is, Enz, don't you think the season evens itself out at the end? Don't you think like the players they will play the right amount of games, especially being like you just yeah, said, 100%. being at Liverpool, 
being at Liverpool, you're going to play in every competition. You're going to compete 100%. for every competition. So it will even itself out at the end, like players getting game time on the pitch. I mean, you need a big squad to compete for Champions yeah, you League, do. Like Premier League, you do. and all the other competitions that like we're, we're entering. And Liverpool is always going to be a part of that, no matter what. And uh, I think, like, with, with Jota, like, like, like this season, look how many injuries we had. Players come in, take their place. And then, you know, like you could rotate on a regular basis. So, he listen, he's in a safe place, uh, JB. I think he'll be all right, man, because oh, like I, I yeah, said, I we, we, play, we play a lot of games. We play a lot of games and we, he's going to eventually play anyway. It will help oh, as well in terms of the fatigue as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we're like, ah, oh, the players look, you know, jaded. They don't look like they're up mm -hmm. for it, especially if we're playing Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, whatever way you want to work it. Um, especially if we're pushing for the Champions League, that means that's exactly, extra games bro. for us. So it's good to see, you know, if for instance we've got a midweek game, you know, Jota can come in fresh legs, you know, and then on, and then that gives Darwin, it gives Gapo that rest. Because mm -hmm. I think even when we rest um, for the Wolves game, we rest Gapo, didn't we? And you can see yeah, how yeah. fresh he was against United. Yeah. He didn't look fatigued at all. Jota came in, played really well in that game. Mm -hmm. um, some will say probably didn't have his best of games, but. You know what I mean? He's trying to get himself back up to fitness level. And I'm sure the goals will come because he, yeah, yeah. he, he gets into good areas. 100%. And there's international football on top of that as well. So he's going to get a lot of game time uh, mm. after Liverpool. So there's a lot of games to play, Jamie. There's a lot of games to play, man. And I think he's yeah. fine. Like I said, we need players at that age, 25, 26. Mm -hmm. We can't keep having young players that's going to like, you know, develop and then they're going to stop. At least he's at that age. He's ready and he's already you know, in his prime. I mean, so that's, that's the best thing about it as well with him. Yeah, look, mm. we need squad rotation. You know, we if mm. we look, we're trying to get this top four position. If we do get it, I think we will. And playing Champions League football again next season. You have got FA Cup, League Cup. You're going for the Premier League again. You know, mm -hmm. you're having a big. You know, obviously the clubs go some kind of. Some this summer is massive for the club. They go ship players out. They go bring players in. There's going to be a lot of. Look, when we talk about the FSG stuff in a bit, guys, I mean, it's going to be, it might be a hard discussion because we are going to buy players, but you're not going to be players people want. <laughs> but they're going to come in anyway. But yeah, we need a squad. And look, when I always look at us, I think we've always been powerful in the forward line under Jürgen. You know, that's what he, what he, he likes a powerful forward line. And, you know, keeping Jota, even if he's fifth choice, you know, he's going to still play a lot of games because, that front three is very interchangeable. You know, you can have Darwin, Mo, and Gakpo one game. You can have uh, Salah, Jota, and Diaz one game. I mean, just that alone. That's what a problem, Jamie. What a problem. And, and, and you look at <laughs> and you look at Salah's age as well. You look at Salah's age. You know, what I mean, how long is he going to stay here for? Like, Nick, yeah. look how fast the years has gone by with these players. We got they were twenty six, was them not so long oh, ago. Exactly. Now they're in their thirties. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There's one yeah, player. So there's a player. There's a player for free in the summer and there's been a lot mm -hmm. of talk today that he might be placed. Liverpool might be interested to replace Bobby Firmino. Oh. Uh, he's going to be a free in the summer, guys. He's going to be a free in the summer. What do we reckon? I'll take if the, if the If Sales. the contract is right, if the contract is right and we're not going to be giving him this overpaying nonsense, why not, man? He's free in it. Why not? Adds a bit extra quality. I know people are going to say he's you get his injury prone and whatever. That's cool. Um, to be fair, he's not injury prone. He just seems to pick up the long term injuries, so it might look like yeah. he's injury prone because he had he obviously picked up a knee knee injury. He had to have obviously knee surgery that kept him out for nearly a year. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. since he's been back, he's been all right. Um, obviously, we ain't going to see the best of him <clears> until he's probably in an, in an environment where he can get back to his best. Maybe Liverpool's that place. But if he's for is, free, is that, it's not like we're spending money. Yeah. Is is like you said, like with him, like you you got nothing to lose at the end of the day, and not only that, like we need competition for Salah, don't we, guys? We need someone who's going to compete with him on that right hand right hand side. So, if this if Essencio is the is the player that actually pushes Salah to like be play consistent, that's the thing with Salah. He, like we were speaking about it before, Jamie, and all of a sudden mm. he's creating goals and scoring goals against Man United. So exactly. if 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 someone is there that's like, pushing him, I think I think Essencio is the guy. Yeah, if it's for free. What we got to lose, and <laughs> and he's lose? used and he's used to that sort of position, being at Real Madrid all his time. You know, he's mm. not always been a first team starter, so he's used to that sort of like competing for a play sort of position. And mm. as a free transfer, 
as long as the wages are, are right, I don't see it as yeah. a massive issue. Also, there's another free transfer in the summer. Apparently, Liverpool have been after looking at him for a while, though, and apparently they've asked Juventus about his contract situation. What are we saying? Oh, okay. What yeah, are we I saying about Rabiot? I would have him. Going to be a free in the summer. I like him. I like him. I'll take him as well. I'm a, I'm a fan of him, man. He's he's well, cold. Well, man. Well, he's... Uh, Nabi Nabi Keita and Oxley is leaving, leaving. But the thing is, is it the homegrown thing going to be a factor as well, guys? Um, well, that's why. <laughs> to, be, to be, to be, to be, no, but to be, <laughs> to be fair, sometimes, sometimes we do need, um, because I, I get it, I get why most people probably wouldn't want him in the team, but at the same time, we do need some of these players that come with the caliber of playing at top clubs, you know, as one decent enough big trophies as well and sometimes you need that experience and that that because we don't really have we don't really have a player in like Rabiot's ilk in our team mm. at the moment if we, obviously if we sign like Bellingham and stuff like that that's cool but squad wins um, titles man so we need a big squad yeah. and especially if Klopp is going to have these guys doing four sessions a week four sessions a day bro you know <laughs> these players dropping like flies bro we need a massive squad still <laughs> Uh, uh, that's, the, that's the thing we need to like sort out, yeah. Go big on, up, Jamie. Jim. Big up, Jim, for the big super chat. I do appreciate Big up, Jamie. Big guys, up, Jim. Legend. Big up, man. Big up, Jim. Thank you very, very much. We really do appreciate it over here, guys. Really do appreciate that. Um, look, we need we need a squad. Is Ravio the answer to a lot of people? Probably not. But He's not the first on the list. Does he, nah. does he, does he do the job Klopp would like? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and that—that that is what I always talk about. Is that Klopp? When you get a manager in, and he's got a system that he plays, to get that system winning, you buy players that fit that system, don't you? That, yeah. I mean, it's just so Rabio might not be F one's cup of tea, yeah, but he sort of fits the system. I mean, look at him for France. France weren't as good in the World Cup when he didn't play that game. True. And because he does all the hard work that lets the better, more skillful players, you know, mm. show, uh, be brighter on the pitch, you know, and you do need them sort of sort of players. I mean, mm-hmm. people would just say it's a Henderson upgrade and <laughs> but then people, people, <laughs> people moan about that. But Henderson was one of the main reasons we won Premier League in the Champions League. Yeah. You know, mm. we can't, you know, we can't pretend, you know, him in that system weren't a, a reason we won things as well. So, yeah, I'm always like everyone wants, we all want quality techie players. Of course we do. We've mm. got one in Thiago. I'd argue that Thiago don't suit our system. But, you know, I've been arguing that for a while. Do we play better without Thiago? I, 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 I'm still not sure about it. But, so, Jamie, Jamie, don't you think like we should mix it up with technical players and hard-working players? We don't should you think do, yeah. that, because, you know, do, everybody yeah. talks about the players burning themselves that season in, season out. If we have technical players mixed up with the, with the, with the obviously, with the hard-working players, maybe the burning out won't be a factor anymore. Maybe I think players, it'll balance it out, man. It'll yeah, balance, it'll balance it, it out. out. Their, their years of staying at a club would prolong, wouldn't it, guys? Something along mm-hmm. those lines. Like, if, if, if you look at our players right, right now, majority of the older players, they can't run anymore. I mean, Henderson, it's not the Henderson that we know. He's an athlete. He's not an athlete no more. But if we get a technical player mixed up with the, with the, with the actual uh, runners, like Casado, for example, someone like that, I think we, we could prolong their careers at Liverpool Football Club. Like, uh, like, like, like I said to you before, guys, like, if you mix up games, you don't have, like, there's games you could put the hardworking guys, there's play games you could put uh, technical guys. If we keep yeah. mixing games like that, I think we'll win more than we will, we will lose. I honestly think that. Oh, you got to. you got to. There's no doubt about that. You have to have a mixture. I, I'm i just wondering what... I think <laughs> Klopp's gone back to something in the last few games that suits us as a playing style. Yeah. And, I, I, and if we get into top four game back to playing the way we used to, yeah. right, with Gakpo is this false nine, the two really fast wingers inside mm. forwards, the work like midfield. Yeah. Klopp might stick with that in the summer which means he goes for players that suit that system, if that makes sense, and get away from mm. that. Because you can tell last season we tried to go to that more technical midfield, didn't we, where it was pass, 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 weren't it? Yeah, yeah. It was like yeah. short pass, it'd be a bit more technical. And you know, it almost won us a quadruple, so you could say it worked. 
but then we didn't work. It didn't really. I don't know. I, I am so because Klopp is so hard to read. It's like I, I'm not sure what he wants. I think we have to change things up on the pitch and off the pitch. Hundred percent. And I think, uh, I think Klopp knows that as well. That's the main thing as well. I do think we had a good balance last season, didn't we, Jamie? In yeah, terms yeah, of yeah. The technical. So. What I was saying about the technical and the, the high energy players, we had the great balance and we had the squad, so we were doing a lot of rotational stuff. So it, it allowed, it allowed us to play in a different way, and that's why we probably didn't get as many injuries as we normally like. Where this season now we've opted back to the reverse of that and just the high octane press, <laughs> and it, high and line, the <clears throat> then the injuries started in. flooding back in. So yeah, we need, hopefully yeah, we get might... some more technical players in a couple more bits of transfer stuff here. So, it is unlikely Mason Mount stays at Chelsea past this season and the midfielder's preference is a move to Liverpool. That is what's been quoted around today. Um, it's probably because we're the only fuckers after him. <laughs> 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 that might be why it's his preference. Um, I'm sure his preference is to stay at Chelsea, but you know, we're, 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 we're what Chelsea are doing in the transfer, in the transfer windows right now. They're definitely going to be looking to add him more in that midfield, and he's not going to play. So he's got a year left in his deal. Yeah, I don't think Chelsea go back care about selling him to us. I really don't think they care. No, I don't think they will. Because the players will. they're buying in, plus they need to make money back to make sure uh, yeah. you know they don't get any caution. So where do we where do we stand? Say say Liverpool went and got I don't know a Rabiot and a free. They got, somehow got Joe Bellingham. You know mm-hmm. you got. They see Stefan Bajic as the, the third midfielder because he weren't meant to be here. You know, and because I think that's what they do see him as. Do they then, and then, and then he, we spend 40 million on Mason Mount. Would you actually be unhappy with Mason Mount coming as long as we got someone like a Jew Bellingham with him as well? Or would Mason, um... Mount, or would Mason Mount's transfer just go, oh, we could have spent that on someone else? Do you know what? I'd, I'd swap out. I'd, I wouldn't mind it, but I'd swap out um, Rabiot for Kone at Mönchengladbach. I think he'll be around the same. How price good is this Kone, man? And so, I don't know. Go and watch him, man. I don't watch him. Huh? I, I, I don't, I don't to, know. It's, I hear it's hard. It. It's hard to say how good he is. It's like you have to watch him and then make your own make your <laughs> own opinion. But if you need someone in terms of transition, speed, strength, aggression, read the game well, young, athletic. And That's he's cheap one. as well. <laughs> so, ticks all the boxes. Um, he's obviously, a... he's still, he has to learn a lot in this game, but he's still a very young player as well, man. And but... you know, 28 million they're asking for him or something like uh, that. Ah, cheap, man. Cheap as chips. <laughs> and and um, I believe, is it Taram at Nice? Is that, yeah, Nice are only, asking as well. mi- they're only asking 30 million euros, which is like 28 million quid. This is where, this is where I always look at it and go, right, these players are in FSG's kind of portfolio. Yep. Age, age, price, and how much they can improve and benefit the team. Yeah? Exactly. And improve price, yeah? They're in FSG's portfolio. So I don't understand why we ain't in for these players. We should be making, like, massive strides for these players. So uh, I, that's why I wonder, through the whole last summer, going through to now, is there a split in the way we're doing transfers in the camp at the moment? That Klopp's got his players he wants, like a Jew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Julian Ward's got the players he wants, so that because he works under FSG, that's the mm-hmm. caliber of player he's looking at. They're clashing. Mm-hmm. Julian Ward mm-hmm. is now leaving. Is, is there? Do you think there's some kind of like split in the camp? How we're doing business? Because Kone and that, as I said, they fit FSG's profile, but do they fit Jurgen Klopp's profile? But here's here's the thing though, Jamie. It should have it, it should have always landed at the manager's feet, regardless as to who you got in control of your transfers. Because mm. at the end of the at the end of the day, Klopp, it's Klopp systems, Klopp seed. So if you're if you're telling me he wants to bring me a player, and I'm like, hold on a minute, bro, this guy doesn't fit what I want to do at the club, and he doesn't fit the mold of what we're trying to do. Then of course I'm not gonna want him. I'm not gonna just take the player because you feel that he, the value's right, and you think he's a player that could jump in our team. No, I don't believe he does as the manager. So I think Klopp wanted probably a bit more hands-on kind of approach with the players he wants to get in, which makes sense. He's the manager of the football club. I get, but at the same time, is he taking on more work? Yes, he is. 
But obviously, but, you right. still need someone and, and to deal with. Wasn't wasn't it working before though with him and Michael Edwards? Someone yeah, challenging that's when, that's, him. Someone challenging him, and you know, like it's like it's like competition off the pitch as well, isn't it? as well as on the pitch. So that makes sense when we was running the um, the yeah. analytics side of it. So when we yeah. was doing that, how we were signing players before, then yeah, that made sense. But now we're not doing that. We've gone away from that. Unless we're going back to that, then yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. Have Edwards or whoever you want to do, or Julian Ward handles it. But we're going away from the analytics side. We're going, okay, this is the new way of playing. This is a transition. This is what we want to do. These are the players I need to achieve this. So that's I think that's why he's gone with. He's big enough and strong enough to make those decisions, isn't it? Like he's of course he is, his, man. He earned the right to do that. So, why, yeah, I'm not here to argue with Jürgen Klopp. I'm a big fan <laughs> of his, in a way. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's if just, he tells us just, we do it that way, we do it that way. Sorry, Jamie, go ahead, brother. I just feel like Klopp's come to a time in his managerial career now at Liverpool that I think we should just all trust. Like, the ownership should probably go. If Klopp says, right, I want... If Klopp will literally turned around to the owners and went, look, I want Bellingham, I want Mason Mount, and I want Kone, I think they yeah. should mm-hmm. just buy him them players because he's earned the right now. Mm-hmm. But also, I do think sometimes you have to... You know, when... I do believe, like I keep going back that sometimes Klopp said, "No, I didn't want certain players. I, I want, I don't want many players this summer. I want to keep this team go again next year, sort of thing." I do believe them talks happen, but what I think sometimes the owners have to do is go, "Okay, Jurgen, we get this, but we've seen this player for like Casado, I don't know, before he went to Brighton for like a couple of million. We've seen him. We think he would be perfect for you, not right now, but in a couple of years. So we're going to bring him in now. You don't have mm-hmm. to put him in your squad, but he's there. You know, I think that's what." should happen but we don't, I don't think it happens enough at our club at the moment but this summer I think Klopp's earned the right now to go if he, if he wants Bellingham he wants whoever I think the owners should just find a way of getting into him you know what I mean it's, no, that, that's true. It's, that, it's that simple for me now he's earned the right you know he's definitely earned yeah, the right so, so yeah, yeah. they should do that another one coming up is apparently Timber from Ajax is looking at interest now the reason this story has come up because there's a story going out today that um one Joel Matip will be leaving in the summer. For me, I think it's the right time for Joel Matip to leave. Yeah. It's time. I think, I think it's right for Joel Matip to leave. You see the way he's been playing recently. You know, he's mm-hmm. getting older now. He doesn't look like the same player. Yes, he always go look good bringing the ball out. But mm-hmm. I've just noticed recently, Kanate does that really well as well. Maybe not to the, yeah. the quality of Joel does it, but Kanate mm-hmm. does it pretty well, you know. <laughs> and... Um, when you look as well, for next season, Virgil and Canate is the number. They're the partnership, yeah. Well, yeah. We, can all admit, we can all admit that. No matter who's there, they're the partnership. But we need to for, start replacing Virgil the season after, in my opinion. So, is someone like a Timber, someone like that, a perfect replacement? Or we do or do we need like a Gavardol? What do you reckon, Ince? Um The great thing about Timber, he can play. He obviously, started at right back, and obviously, he can now play centre back. So that's mm. two positions you cover. So if Trent needs a break, um, just throw him out there, and he'll do the same job. To be fair, um, Vardio makes sense. I think probably the long term replacement, maybe for Virgil, maybe not in the same stature, but obviously you're going to have Canate. I think Canate is the Virgil replacement. I think it's mm. just we need to replace the other guys now. So I think getting a Vardio in would be. To replace the Joel Matip's, the let's say Gomez, if if that's what we want to do as well. But Virgil's replacement is is Canate. It's key. It's key. It's key. Like yeah. like with with Virgil, like what 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 we need to understand is is his dominance. You know what I mean? And and his composure and what mm. he brings, like the, that 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 demeanor he has. That's what we need to look for. You know what I mean? I I I love Konate, but he panics a lot. If you know what I mean? Like sometimes he puts you at the edge of your chair. Uh, and if he's the Virgil replacement, he needs to be more composed on the ball. He needs to have. He's like, twenty three though, bro. Yeah, yeah, but it's still yeah, twenty three, bro. Yeah, I Virgil know, bro. only got good when he was twenty six. I, I know, I know, but Virgil always, uh, Virgil always had that, that calm presence, bro. Yeah. That's that's what I want to no, see that's from, cool. from, no, that's from Konate cool. eventually. Not, if, if he's not, if he's the one that is, like, I want to see yeah, that. Yeah, not from not him. every defender has the same. You know, <laughs> that's why you you had Ferdinand and Vidic, bro. One was the rash one, and one was the calm one. It, yeah, you know, you're never gonna get that. So I, I, I get, I get what you're saying, but at the same time, he's 23. Yeah. Centre backs normally get good when they're like 28. That's when they mastered or I, I, listen, close I, to like. I just want to see if he could get there. I just want, like, I, I love for him to I, get I, there. I will, man. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, I think, I think, he's I, we'll miss Virgil. We'll miss, I sorry, think with the Virgil, yeah, I think with the Virgil thing is that 
we we I think we got completely. I don't like using the word spoiled because it don't always make sense. But with Virgil, we did get spoiled because yeah. you know you saw as I keep saying it, it, we had a centre back that should have taken a Ballon d'Or away from Messi and Ronaldo Oof. that year. That's mm. how good of a centre back he is. Yeah, and you know his drop, which has come, which you know isn't a massive drop. It's just that he was he was Superman, and now he's Clark Kent. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that, 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 that's what it is, yeah? I love that he, was one, yeah. Super, he was Superman, now he's Clark Kent. You know, it, it, he's still better than a lot of other defenders around there, you know? It, it's just that we saw him at such a high level. And they, look, people like Kanata and that, we, he's never going to be that level. Because there's, yeah. there's a certain level players can get to. But Kanata is a quality defender. I don't know many good 23-year-old defenders like Kanata in world football. I mean, you look at Gavidol. The reason everyone's talking about him because he had a great World Cup, yeah. but he wouldn't have had, he wouldn't have had that of great World Cup. If he didn't have Lovren next to him. Right? Yeah, he needed experience and, always, yeah. And Lovren was excellent in that World Cup as well, and people don't really talk about that enough because who he is, you no. Know? Yeah. But if you go back and look at Lovren's career, it was only ever shit at Liverpool. <laughs> go back and look at Lovren's Sometimes career. the pressure is too much, Jamie. You know what I mean? Well, the yeah, pressure is too heavy, heavy, man. The pressure, he actually, yeah. He was actually good everywhere, but Lovren. Was that steady Eddie basically? Yeah. That mm. let Garadol shine. Kanate is that like Kanate can shine, but he's not that talkative leader at the back. Like, like people used to say that about Varane when he was at Real Madrid. That it was a um, thing that made him look the player he was. And you, you know, you, and you watch Ramos, Varane sometimes. Yeah. yeah, you watch Varane, Varane sometimes when he plays for Man United. You're like, yeah, he does need that. He does <laughs> need that defender next to him. It yeah. don't mean Varane's a shit defender. It just means, like Ken says, Rio and uh, Vidic are, are quality centre backs on their own, but you needed one with the other to, you know, to make it work. And yeah, I, I, Ying I and Yang. yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just you just need it. But Timber would be a one. Obviously, Gavidol's the other one. I don't know any many quality quality centre backs. And you look at the money that people are paying for centre backs now. What was it for Fana? Eighty-five million. I mean, it's just that's crazy, man. No, I, I, and we got Canati for under forty. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, just, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's true. It, so you know, the price of these defenders are just going up and up and up and up and up. It's just, it's just absolute madness right now. Um, there was one more I had. Um, so Peter Luga, apparently. Uh, AC Milan and Atletico Madrid uh, uh, have been watching him during his recent under-21 game against Arsenal. And he got some massive reviews off the scouts for AC Milan and Atletico Madrid. Um, are we worried about Peter Luga? Because he came from Alisson's recommendation, I do believe. Alisson yeah. talks highly about yeah. this kid. Apparently inside Liverpool, they talk very, very highly about him as well. He's only a young guy at the moment. It mm. looks like Kevin Kelleher is... Even Kelleher is going to leave next, in the summer. Mm-hmm. I don't blame Kelleher wanting to leave because I think he could be a number one anywhere at the moment. <laughs> I think he could play for Tottenham or Leicester tomorrow and be their number one. I really yeah, do. Yeah, hundred percent. So I don't blame him for wanting to leave. So Liverpool should get a decent price for him. Yeah. Then we need a number two. Peter Uga's obviously too young to be number two yet. Davis is too young to be number two, and I don't think they're ready enough either. But if someone Peter Luger, it's something we should be going. No, hands off. No one can touch this uh, guy. Yeah, hundred percent. Be special, or do we loan him and and get me? Nah, this this is the problem though, Jamie. Because imagine loaning him. Imagine a scenario where we loan him. Mm-hmm. Adrian goes in the summer, and then we sell Kelleher, so we only have Allison. <laughs> Allison gets injured. <laughs> Who Ooh. the hell do we play? Who plays? Adrian. We can't. We can't. <laughs> no, Adrian is he's leaving in the summer for free as well. Oh damn! I forgot about that. Yeah. So we have to keep. And I think this is the issue now Liverpool has. I think we have to keep Kelleher. But what the issue is, Liverpool haven't done enough in terms of giving him games that we could just play him in. But There's the so many is... games this season he could start and mm-hmm. we just, oh no, Alisson has to play. I get it. He's the number one. I get it. I get it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, the kid is so good, he can easily play in most of the, the, the Premier League games as well. Yeah, You're telling me you couldn't have played against like Brentford, Crystal Palace... Nottingham, of course Aston could. Villa, all of these. He can play against all of these teams yeah. easily as well. We don't have to always be playing Allison because we've got such a good number two. But the issue is we don't do that. And we only give him the cup games. Like this season, 
we got knocked out the cups really early. So yeah. he didn't get the same amount of minutes he got last season. And because he got so many minutes last season, he was just like, ah, oh, it makes sense. But if we didn't get the, this season, didn't get them same minutes, mm-hmm. he's like, well, I could easily go and play for another top team or I can, you know, I can go and be, become a number one somewhere else instead so of sitting that, on the, the bench. The ends, do you think like with him, is he going to be the successor to Alisson? I think he, he could be. Jamie, you I think? think it, bro. Like, what, what, what can he not do? Is if you look at what the way Liverpool play mm-hmm. and the way the way goalkeepers are asked to play now, that sweep mm-hmm. the keeper role, Keller's mm-hmm. perfect to it. If I look at oh, Edison, if I look at Edison at Man City, I don't think Edison is a great goalkeeper just as a goalkeeper. I think mm-hmm. he lets a lot of. I think his shot stopping is not great. I think he lets a lot of shots in that he should be he should be saving. Um, he's a good sweeper keeper and he's quick coming out of his box mm-hmm. but that's why that's why Pep looked at him it's a new age of goalkeeping and when I look at Cleveland Keller I think Keller is a, is a very good shot stopper he's big, he's strong uh, he's getting better when he comes in for crosses now Yeah. and he and the ball, with the ball at his feet he, he's more steady than Allison. you know, he, mm-hmm. you know Allison gets a bit you know, he loses control of that ball sometimes. He rushes himself. Where <laughs> that's yeah. because he thinks he's a midfielder, bro. That's James. the problem, yeah, man. It get, it gets us all heart attack. Where Cleveland is very, you know, he's very calm. He's calm. Him. He's calm. He's yeah. Calm. So I could see. I, I said it could be a Premier League number one. I, I really do think that. Problem is, Allison's gonna be here for five years, mate. That's so, the thing. Yeah. Allison and, and comes out and uses outside of his foot to pass the ball. <laughs> long distance. I'm like, Ali, bro, just pass it with the instep, man. We're cool. We understand. We know your distribution is there, but we don't need you running onto it and outside that, it in a foot pass. Is that, is that the one that we never scored from when he outside passed it to Trent? Yeah. Trent outside passed it. And I can't remember, did it go to Darwin and Darwin just put no. it wide? That, yeah. would have oh, been, that would have been a heck of a goal. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love, I love, I love, I love Queen. I, I, I love Cleveland. He's, so uh, then, then, then they should keep him, innit? They should keep him by any means we necessary. Have to. I mean, we you have, have to like speak well, to him, to. tell him you're you're going to be the successor uh, to Allison eventually. Just just stay around. Can, you know so, what I mean? can someone just check his age or anyone in the comments? Can you just pre- what what Queef? I think he's what 23, 24. I don't think he's that. But old, can you just double check his age? Yeah, I've got it. Uh, oh no, I've just put in Kate, uh, Kelleher. He gave me Kate. He's twenty four. He's twenty four. Yeah, yeah, he's twenty four. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. what? A couple of more years? Why not? Like, you know, what I mean, eventually take over. I mean, I know, like, you guys thinking about five years. Maybe Alisson will say, like, I want to go. You never know, innit? That's how Brazilian people are. They probably he probably say, I've done all I can at Liverpool. It's time to go. You know, what I mean, next project. That, that's what, and we can't lose a player like Kelleher in goal. Uh, uh-huh. Just, yeah, I mean, just to sacrifice that kind of thing. I think like Kelleher, they, they should speak to him. Like, stay so like. Ev- like Everyone's saying buyback clauses, yeah. I've heard that a lot, buyback clauses. Has mm-hmm. a buyback mm-hmm. clause ever worked? Yeah, I think Chelsea Unless do that, he... don't they? Chelsea do that. Man, I, think they put, I, think, I, I think they put I think they put buyback loans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they do buyback transfers. Because everyone they yeah. let go, I think it's more of a loan than a transfer. I'm not sure. I can't, I'm trying to think how many teams have actually come back from a buyback in their cl- in their contract. Mm. But the problem is, you like time moves on, don't it? You know, oh, yeah. you, you don't sit there in three years' time and go, oh, do you remember we put Kelleher buyback clause on? But then another keeper who comes along that's better, you go, oh, I'll just get the better goalkeeper now. You know what I mean? So it's, it depends, it's it depends on him, though, Jamie. Isn't it? it depends on him yeah. how patient he is. You know what I mean? And um, he is developing as a goalkeeper. He's getting better every season since we've known him. Like I remember, like there's a few seasons ago, he was letting goals in, even like easy catches. Now mm-hmm. it looks like he's, he's he's physically like he looks different. It looks like he he wants to be like a, a first team player. But yeah, it just it depends on him how patient he is. And I, I hope he stays, mate. I really hope he stays because. Uh, I want him to be the successor to Alisson eventually as well. Like, yeah, come on, man, it's, it's Irish, isn't it? Liverpool is an Irish city, so yeah, why not, yeah. man? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And the thing that irritate, I think the thing that might have just jerked Kelleher a bit this season is that he never got the FA Cup games. Oh yeah, you yeah. Know, that, that Alisson, was a strange one. Alisson got given the FA Cup games, and Kelleher must have been like, "Hang on, I barely play as it is. I did League Cup. Usually, like Kelleher should have just had the domestic cups." Yeah, you know, he's not a shoddy keeper. He's a quality goalkeeper. He should have yeah. just had the domestic cups. Gave him the domestic cups. You know, and when we were through in Champions League groups and all that, you know, Keller still didn't play. 
Yeah, that was last, season, well, bro. last yeah. season when we won six out of six. And it's like, just play Kelleher. He yeah. could play in goal for this play game. Him. It's like, play him. Give him a Champions League game. And we never did. And that sort of like yeah. worries me a little bit. So mm. if it worries me and I'm not the goalkeeper and Kelleher is, he's probably thinking there and thinking, I'm looking at these like, teams uh, and they like, like me the goalkeeper. Like, like like I said, like uh-huh. how long it look, it took us it took us to get someone like Allison, guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, we, we can't lose quality goalkeepers. It takes a while to get quality goalkeepers as well. So if we lose mm. them, it's going to be a big regret in my opinion. Yeah, I just um, but, what, Jamie, sorry, I got to shoot. Uh, yeah, so go I can only um, uh, jump on. Well, big up to you too, man. Thanks for the um, thanks for the invite as always, man. No worries. I redirect everyone over when I'm finished, right, my man? Yeah, and that's all good. Listen, I'm I'm close to that 400 mark, Jamie. So push them. I need trying to hit that mark there. That's the next yeah. target. I'm thinking. There I'm you go. We'll share there. it, man. We'll share it, bro. Don't worry about that. Big up to everyone, man. Put your link in the chat ins when you leave, and then uh, I'll, cool. I'll get it out there, all right, man? Appreciate Big it. Up, bro. No worries, my man. No worries. So Big guys, up, don't forget go and subscribe to Ends TV. Yeah, go and subscribe to Ends, man. It's a few away from 400. Go and subscribe to Fozzy as well. Get Thanks, everyone bro. up on their subscribers, guys. Um, yeah, Kelleher is one that I look at and think it's, 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 we've got a problem where I think the last time we had this problem was when we had Kirkland and Dudek. And <laughs> yeah, Dudek, Kirkland was meant to be Carson the next as well. Week. I think they had Carson yeah. as well. On top, Carson was all three, choice, yeah. yeah, yeah, Carson was mm-hmm. third choice. Mm-hmm. And we had, uh, we had Kirkland there, and Kirkland was meant to be. He's not for now. Kirkland's that tomorrow player. He's got to be a superstar. And Kirkland should have been. Injuries, obviously, and his yeah. hand. He kept breaking his hand a lot and stuff like that. He had massive issues with injuries, and it didn't work for him, unfortunately. But he was meant to be the next big thing. And obviously, yeah. he had other issues as well. Um, but he's a good guy, Chris Kirkland. And then Dudek was our number one. Then Rayner came in. I think Dudek was number two to Rayner for a little bit. And then he went. Mm-hmm. And then we had Mingale. Enough said about that about and then, um, <laughs> so we never, we never had that, we never had that great one and two. Now, if Allison yeah. got injured tomorrow, he couldn't play for three games. I wouldn't, it wouldn't worry me. I wouldn't be sitting yeah. here, same with you, you and probably everyone chat. I don't think we'd be sitting here going, ah, oh, shit. You know what I mean? We're no, of course like, we wouldn't. Oh, no, no. Okay. Yeah, Keller are coming for three games. It's not the end of the world. He's a decent goalkeeper. But Keller's thing yeah. is, Unfortunately, he's got arguably the best goalkeeper in world football in front of him. And how do you, how do you go? What does he do? I mean, I think he's getting better because he's training with him every day. Mm-hmm. That's going to improve. And, and they've got Tafarel there as well, the Brazilian. Yeah, uh, ex- comes in. Walk up winner, yeah. Exactly. And like you're just thinking, what? If I move anywhere <laughs> else, I, I, if I go to Tottenham, say, and. Uh. I'm not going to be where I'm competing for things that like I am with Liverpool. You know, Liverpool are having a shittiest season and are only mm. three points off Tottenham are having, like, a decent season. It, it's the yeah. levels, man. You know what I mean? Of course, it's 100% levels. here, bro. Yeah. And Keller might be thinking, if I go to Tottenham, I'm not going to be competing or anything. <laughs> I've got, what, Larice who's finished. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> I've got Alisson here. I've got Tafarel. I've got... I, I, I come in every day and see Mo Sarah, Darwin Nunes, Tiago. The quality, yeah, the quality goes down, yeah. You know, yeah. It, it, it must be really hard. But at the same time, I wouldn't blame Kelleher if he wanted to leave. No, I don't, no. don't think, in a way, I don't think Liverpool should stand in his way either because this is a young guy who thinks he can be a lot better. And if we ain't giving him the opportunity, to, to me, Jamie, like he needs to like worry about his own career, like you just said. Mm, and, uh, exactly. How about if he goes to a different team and it doesn't suit the way he is? You get what I'm saying? Because you got to mm. go to a team that suits your ability, and for Liverpool, does suit his ability. So, like a lot of players left us in the past, and uh, they regret it after that. Like Coutinho's, and you got other 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 players uh, like Emre Chan. You know what I mean? And Wijnaldum, they left us because they, their ability doesn't suit the system to the teams they be, they're going to. So that's that's what he needs to think about before he makes that decision like leaving Liverpool. Like I said, we said five years and if Klopp promises him like he's going to be in and out the team with uh, with Alisson, uh, like you said, most of the Cups, probably a few games in the Champions League uh, in the coming seasons, maybe he will say, uh, maybe like, you know what, I want to take his place eventually. I could stick around. You know what I mean? 
Uh, and I worry about things like that, Jamie. Like, if we lose a quality goalkeeper, it's hard to find, man. And like you said, Pepe Reina was the last quality uh, keeper before um, Alisson. And that, that's a long way, you know what I mean? And long how long way. did it take us to to replace Bruce Grobler and uh, Cl Ray Clements, you know what I mean? Things like that. So, you remember the days of Do you remember the days of Mike Hooper? <laughs> there you go, yeah. bro. They're, they're the go. days, man. They're the days. Um, big up, Binny, for Ethiopia. Big up to you. Big up. Um, yeah, look, there ain't many great goalkeepers in world football either. I ain't going to mm -hmm. lie. There's a lot of decent goalkeepers, a lot of good goalkeepers, but there ain't... I can't tell you. I don't think there's a lot of world-class goalkeepers in world football right now. No, there ain't. Uh, there's a lot of good goalkeepers, you know, but... So, so, well, Jamie, sometimes I think to myself, is it us? Because I don't watch football like I used to anymore. Like, I'm, no. I'm a fanatic, but I, 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 I've gone down a bit in watching football now. Maybe we don't yes, see man. the best goalkeepers in the world. Maybe that's, that's where it is. Maybe there is. Yeah. Maybe there is. We don't, we don't know. I mean, like, I don't know about you, Jamie. I don't watch football as often as I used to, like, watching world football. I, I can't anymore. Being a family man as well. Mm. I mean, I've got three kids and a wife and things like that. And Yeah. You know, I, I, like, before we had kids, I would just be watching football, 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 exactly. football, 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 football. Doesn't matter what you I think. Know, I'd watch football, 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 football. <laughs> Go out with the wife, come back, watch play PlayStation, watch football, football, football. <laughs> go out with the wife, play PlayStation, go out with the That was me. That was me. But same here, same here. Same when, generation, when, mate. When, yeah. when you get old, unfortunately, when you get older and you have families and stuff like that, and you get married, it, it, you just can't. Obviously, I watch everything in Premier League because it's our yeah. league. So, but I used to watch a lot of world football. Oh, I, I, used be, I used yeah. to I used to be glued to Channel Four for Italian football when I was a kid. I used to love that. Come on, I'm older than you, Jamie. Come on, of course I remember Gazetta football Italian. I, I, there. I, I, Come on. <laughs> I used to be like, how old was I back then? I was like a teenager, man. In the I, I was a teenager watching it back then, and I was like, oh, I love this. I mean, I think <laughs> not, I mean, I was 16 in '98, so yeah, I, I I just used to sit there watching Italian football all the time, and used to love it and. Yeah, you know, I used to watch Eurosport. You remember Eurosport? Euro, of course, their, bro. Come Euro, on. Eurosport used to have their weekly European roundup. Do you remember that? For yes. About two hours. And two hours, about, bro. Talk about the Portuguese league, the German league, Italian league, and show all the games. I used to sit there going, wow. And then you learn about all these players. And everything. Exactly, it's bro. Solid. No, like sometimes, sometimes in Twitter, I share some players and people. Uh, maybe because I'm too old for them, they don't. They don't know the players. Like I, I, I put Ruby Sosa once from Inter Milan. He used to be the oh. partner for Dennis Bergkamp. Remember, yeah, Ruby yeah. Sosa, Uruguayan, that left foot. Ruben Sosa, man. <laughs> people don't even know players like that. You know, they, they're just lost in the archives, man. But they, they yeah. were great, man. Nah, yeah, cool. Roberto Baggio at Juventus, uh, Ravinelli and Viali. Come on, yeah. Jamie. Those players, bro. It's the but, best time. Best time, but, man. Baggio was my favourite man. I, I love Baggio, man. I used to try and do the Baggio seven at school. Do you remember that? Yeah. Left foot, right foot, knee, knee. Was it shoulder, shoulder, head? Wasn't it? All the way dropping the ball. Yeah. Do I you know that. he won? He won the Ballon d'Or with the with the one knee damaged. Like he's got bone on bone on one knee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah People don't even know that. And he won the Ballon d'Or. Can you imagine with two knees? Like if he had two knees, like he would be probably the, one of the greatest ever. Oh, I, I, that document. I've seen his documentary. That documentary is quality. I, yeah. I love the old football documentaries. Yeah, I could talk I about football. Back. Retro football's the best, man. It's the talk best, man. Forever. Talk about proper forever. footballers. Proper footballers back in the day, mate. Proper. Uh, let's talk about a proper footballer, Nat Phillips. <laughs> so, <laughs> heck of a segue, I know. Heck of a segue. <laughs> but uh, apparently, Nat, Nat Phillips is being watched by her for Berlin. Um, it's time to go, Nat, isn't it? Nat Phillips have been trying to leave for two years, but we always get injured. <laughs> it would get injuries and we go right Nat you have to stay you have to stay but do you see Nat and Matip leaving next in the summer I think Nat is going to have to like leave to get his career started mate. I think he stayed at Liverpool for far too long not getting the first team opportunity I, I felt sorry for him because that season when we when we had all those centre-backs injured he came to his own he, he, we qualified for the Champions League in third place with him as, as the main centre-back and he, he didn't get a look in after that when everybody came back which is unfortunate for him because I thought he was brilliant and with time he reminds me of John Terry I don't know what you think like John Terry type of defender like I think with time he would have come to his own but a lot of people don't trust him so yeah I think it's time for him like to look elsewhere and get his career started because um, how long can you wait bro how long can you wait yeah, uh, you know what I mean like, now, he? yeah he's getting older now man and yeah he's he, 
he, he, listen, if somewhere else he he will come good. He will, he will become good, and he will become a regular, other than Liverpool. Somewhere else, other than Liverpool. Yeah, I, I, I've, I think Nat Phillips could have a good career somewhere. I think he's just got to leave now. He's a good defender. He's he a good is, defender. It, what what stops him being up there is his athleticism, right? That's why he doesn't play. He hasn't got the athleticism to be a Liverpool centre back, probably. And that's what I think like, if he watches someone like John Terry, who wasn't the quickest defender in the world, I think like if, if he watches someone like that and then base his game on someone like John Terry, I think he'll be fine. But it doesn't yeah, look yeah, like yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like he looks at things like that. But because uh, he, if you look at him, he's similar to that type of defender. And, no nonsense. Uh, it's no nonsense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think if he like base himself on someone like that, I think he'll be fine. And uh, he could just, he just needs a start, bro. He just needs somewhere to start and become a regular. Once he becomes a regular, the consistency comes with it and the trust comes with it. And then he's going to become the, the, the defender that he's supposed to be, uh, you know, in the future as well. Yeah, he just needs somewhere to settle in. That's all. And look, you can't tell me he ain't better than Conor Cody and, you know, you defenders like that. It's just that what, the way Liverpool play just doesn't suit Nat Phillips's game. You know, it's just more difficult for him. So you go to like, you're telling me you couldn't play back for West Ham in the way they Come play on, more defensively. Come on, more, de- more defensively <laughs> set up. Nat Phillips is going to have a quality time of it. So yeah, he, yeah. he needs to leave. Uh, Matic, we spoke about. I think it's just time for him to go. Gomez will stay. Although I think Gomez should probably go as well. But I think he's going to be part of that homegrown. You know, yeah, and... but he's, he's, he can't play centre back, man. I'm sorry, Jamie. I know he no. won the league. I know he won the league that season, but well, come on, that was Van Dijk in his prime. Virgil, bro, you know what I mean? yeah, Virgil, come on. I, I've said it for a while now. If you actually look at Gomez's Liverpool career, he's probably had six good months. Exactly, and that's all because Virgil made him look like Virgil Superman. Virgil at the time, Superman. Yeah. yeah look, so look it, at the cover, like the cover he was doing for him in that season. People yeah. look back at that season and look how many times Virgil came behind him and, and helped him out. Just, just look yeah. back. Just look back at that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Big up, Vic says, Jamie, do a stream. Favourite retro 90 players or a 90s draft plus? Uh, please. Um, do you know what? <laughs> if Foddy's all right with it, we could do it together and do it as a members video. Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah, we could do that for a members video. I've taken a photo of it on my phone so I can jot it down. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll 100%. definitely think about that. Vic. Definitely think about that. Big up, Stubbsy. Hope you're doing well, man. Big up, Jamie Lane. How oh, you yeah, doing? Stubbsy. Oh, are you going to be doing a show next week? Man, I'm... Every day of the week. Next week, <laughs> next 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 week. Well, I won't be because I'm away. So yeah, no shows from. There won't be any shows from me, guys, from Monday to Friday because I am not home. So yeah, I may have five days off because I'm uh, I'm on I'm on my holds. So yeah, there won't be any then. But be back the following weekend. But I'm doing shows all up to the, up to Monday. So big up subs. See how you're doing, well, mate. Um. Uh, I think Gomez would be okay in Fab's position. What, as a DM? I'm not sure I, I don't even trust him that. as a centre back. How am I going to trust him as a DM? I no, think he's a I'm right sure back. He's just a right back. I think he's just a right back, Jamie. I, I don't yeah. think he'll go further than that. No, no, I think he's. Uh, I think he's unfortunately done for a Liverpool point of view. I think that's all the players we have spoke about so far. Yeah, apart from one. Ooh. Where this comes from left field. So Liverpool are apparently ready to pay twenty five million for Las Palmas midfielder Alberto Malerio. I think his name is Morelio. I don't know nothing about him. Big up G. Mm-hmm. G's been doing this thing where he's been doing player watch for the last couple of weeks. I think he puts it on his uh, uh YouTube shorts and uh That's brilliant. He was actually one of the players that he brought up a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And then this came out yesterday, this article, so yeah, he's buzzing off that. So I don't know much about him. I ain't gonna lie. I don't watch Las Palmas on the weekly. So, um, I mean, do Liverpool take a risk in, in players like that? That's the thing you got to think about as well. Yeah, mm. I mean, are they scouting? I, I, I mean, I've always been worried about our scouting. Are we scouting Las Palmas players? Oh, I, I, <laughs> Go the yeah, cheap not, route. Go the cheap route, innit? I, I, I'm not <laughs> sure, man. I'm not sure. Uh, big up DJ Braves Jamie the next time in track for, for plays uh, have a look at uh, even Indicia he's, uh, he's nice can replace Matic Gomez should be a backup for Trent I will check him out because I know a lot of people keep talking about him and I said I've not really uh, heard of him that much I will check him out uh, DM me mate we'll sort something out during the national break big up Stubbsy um, sad low Joe loved this club but that freak injury the England training ruined it 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jamie, do you or Fozzy rate Declan Rice? I rate Declan Rice, for, not for oh, the money. West, right. Not for the money West Ham go after him, though. How much they ask him? Uh, they were 120 bills for him, don't they? No, that ain't yeah. happening. No, 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 no. no. But the problem West Ham guy get is that Declan Rice is in his last year of his contract and he ain't going to sign a new one. So do they risk letting him go for free? Our teams go, go we ain't paying we ain't paying hundred million for a player where it's gonna be free in the summer. No. You know, so I, I don't know where they stand unless they can get a good deal out of him. I like him. He's a good I don't Is he is like, he an upgrade to Henderson, you think, Jamie? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the age that he is, I think he's got more about his game than defensively than Hendo's got right now. And he can get about the pitch a lot better. I think that sometimes we look at players that play at, at terrible teams mm -hmm. and don't maybe acknowledge how good they can be. I think, you know, of... Do you know what I think, Jamie? I think it's the finance bit that, that destroys yeah. it for that player. I think yeah. when they put 80, 90 million for a player, that's not worth that. It ruins their you know, like potential of going to a bigger club, if you know what I mean. And English players always cost that much for some reason. And this yeah. is why people are put off. This what, uh, That's how I see it when I, when I look at English players. I, 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 I like Dick Rice. You know what I mean, I think he could, he could have a place at Liverpool. And uh, it just depends on it. Just depends on the actual transfer. That's what it depends on. If if it's fair, and 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 right for Liverpool, I think they'll go for him. If it's not, if it's the, around the hundred million mark, like Jamie said, I don't think they'll go for a player like that. Come on, man. Well, FSG earned. <laughs> we don't go further than like a forty million or fifty million. Uh, I mean, unless we sell to buy, and then we could stretch that bit further. That's about it, really. Well. You mentioned the man, your best friend on W. Henry. Right, we're going. <laughs> Let's get to this FSG bit now. So, obviously, the Echo put out a article. No, well timed or not, as I keep saying, it was the interview was probably done before the weekend. Yeah. It was probably up to the Echo when they delivered that to the world. Um, I think Ian Doyle said it was done on Friday. The interview and then. They released it Tuesday, whatever it is. So, John W. Henry, we have been, uh, we have seen many football clubs, Liverpool included, go down unstable paths in the past. Oh, we have and will continue to focus our attention on investing wisely <laughs> and remain incredibly proud of our squad. We continue building uh, LFC in a responsible manner. Um, I don't know quite how to digest that. Look, I've never been an FSG hater. I, Till around this season, really, mm -hmm. I've never really. I've always been one of them fans that I think I've always been on the look at it. I'm, I'm quite a po I've got quite a positive outlook in life, so I'm quite. You know, people take the mick out of me being a positive Liverpool fan and all that sort of stuff. But oh, you're within your right. I mean, yeah, like and I, I always look at it and think like, what well, when we win together, when we win, we win together. When we lose, we lose together. And then if there's a reason why we're not going back to winning, then you got to have a look at it, like. I don't think going for the quadruple last year and just missing out, I don't think that's all on the owners. You know, there was there was sometimes, you know, Man City just, it was one one game mm -hmm. somewhere in the season. You go back and look at it and think, right, we did better that game and win the league, you know. That's you cool. know, the, the Champions League, you're playing the best team in the world. And I thought, per, per basically, <clears throat> I thought we were very well matched up for Real Madrid to that game, player for player. I really yeah. thought we were very well matched up for player for player in that game. But Ancelotti looked at it and thought, I know how to beat them and played the way <laughs> of beating us. And so I can't always put everything that happens on the pitch to the owners until this season when I look at it and go, right, I've said this before time and time again. When I talk about Jurgen Klopp I, and this mythical he's bad after seven-year period thing, it drives me mad because if you look at the three clubs he's managed, he's managed um, Liverpool, Borussia Dortmund and Mainz. None of them had money, all right? None of them had money. Jurgen Klopp has a particular way of playing. It's not a long, long-term football. It's, it has a period of time where five years, they try and win everything, get to where they want to be. And then you've got to reinvest to keep that team going. If you go at Borussia Dortmund, Jurgen Klopp took over at Borussia Dortmund, very similar to Liverpool when he took over Liverpool. They were Dan, 
They're a big, big side in Germany, the second biggest team in Germany, down on their luck. Players are getting old. There's no investment in the team. Jürgen come along, pick that team up. He had the people he knew he brought with him, his coaching staff, his doctors, the physios, you know, all, all the scouting, all that he knew. And they got back into a, where Klopp wanted to go, set up a way he wanted to play. Took a couple of years, and after that, won back to back German leagues, got to a Champions League final. Them and Bayern Munich were arguably the two best teams in Europe at that time as well when they met in that final. And it got them so far. But the problem is Borussia Dortmund couldn't invest enough to compete with Man- compete weekly with Bayern-, Bayern Munich every season. Bayern Munich would come along and go, right, Lewandowski's got a year left in his contract. That's lean on him, make it impossible for him to stay at Borussia Dortmund. They take their best striker. Mario Goetze, let's take Mario Goetze. Hummels, let's take Hummels. You know, and, 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 and Klopp at Dortmund couldn't keep his side title challenging because the investment weren't there to keep going another season after season. Same with Mainz, yeah. never been promoted in their history. Klopp took over, played there his whole career, took over from his manager, got him a way of playing, got him promoted, eventually got him relegated. But, you know, they're a tiny team in a part, small part of Germany with a very small population. And there was no yeah. investment there to keep them going. So, because he's got a way of playing, Jürgen, that is very short term, you've got to, to keep that long term, you've got to heavily invest. Yeah, Jürgen, yeah. our players come to the end of their functional ability at the end of last season. You know, they were shattered, done, finished. Heavy investment needed to happen the year before and then this summer to keep Jürgen going again. Yeah. And this summer, for me, is just so huge on this football club. So, so huge on this football club. Jürgen included. They've all got to sit down for it with FSG, everyone, and decide what they're going to do. Us as fans, we want... We want this player, that player, that player, that player. We won't be happy. You know, it's just the way fans are. Mm-hmm. We've got to be realistic. This can't all happen in one transfer window. You know who our owners are. <laughs> yeah. But what do you think is going to happen this summer, Fozzie? Before we get to the finer details of FSG and what they said in this article, what do you, what do you think is going to happen in the summer? You you know, like, I'm frustrated a lot. I will discuss that later anyway. But with, with FSG, they've got no choice, mate. They have to spend. If they don't spend, not only the fans are going to be frustrated, the manager will be frustrated. Because you know with, 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 with Jürgen Klopp, what drives him? Emotion. Like he gets tired. He gets, you know what I mean? And things like that. He's trying to like um, put Pep Lindis in a high regards this season to help him out, take the work, work off him a bit. And it didn't work. So now he's taking the actual, like the, the, the driving seat back. And he wants next season to be better than this season. If they don't spend, what worries me, people, is Jurgen Klopp saying, you know what, I've done all I can. These owners don't share the same ambition as me and the fans, especially. It's time to walk off. That's what worries me more than anything, Jamie. Mm Because FSG have to spend in the summer. They don't spend. Everyone, I tell you right now, start worrying about Jurgen Klopp. Because there's no other manager that can do what he can under this ownership. I'm telling you right now, supported this club for 44 years. And I'm still going, and I'm still like trying to like keep calm, like Jamie d- says, because our our generation, like that's how we are. We we're more or less calm. But there's so much I can take, especially this manager that doesn't doesn't deserve what he's receiving from these ownerships. Normally, I stay quiet. I don't get involved in things like this, Jamie. But mm. he, we got to look at Jurgen Klopp, guys. This man has done us something that hasn't been done for thirty years, and he should be up there right now, not down here. Not below that, up there. But these owners are not helping him. That's how I see it, JB. Like, and if they don't spend this summer, alarm bells. Alarm bells, in my opinion, mate. No, I, I agree. I mean, I, look, I'll, I've said it before. This is, uh, this is FSG's war chest. You know what I mean? That, uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that's what it is. But I, look, I, I think they've got no choice but to spend this summer. And I think that's the thing that hurts them the most because don't, they don't want to. And that, that, that is where, I, literally, I think that is the case. Yeah. They know they have to. They know, they look, they're not stupid people at the end of the day. They do know the heat ain't quite on them. Yeah, we saw the aeroplane going over and all that. I'm going to get to that. It's something minute, like right? that. It's something like that for uh, them. Uh, 
And like, I don't think an aeroplane that going over, big up Kurdish and all that for uh, doing it. Big up. I mean, it's not my thing, but mm -hmm. it, I'm not going to moan at people doing it and voting for it. It's big up to them. They put their money into it. Of course. But so. um, I don't think that's still going to be enough. And I know the article come out on Tuesday. And everyone mm -hmm. linked what they saw on Sunday with the art. The thing going over and right, we did it. It worked. The article come out. It was like, no, guys, that article <laughs> came out. That article was done before the weekend, and then yeah. the Echo decide when to publish it. Of course, you know, it, they didn't sit down on Monday, have that interview, and then it's published on Tuesday. That's just everything's not the way planned. It works. Everything's planned, Jamie. Yeah, you know planned that. Planned out. And the Echo decide. I would actually blame the Echo for when they brought that article yes. out more yes. than when FSG yes. did the article. If yes. that makes sense. Because it makes Echo look like they're sticking up for FSG by bringing it out when we've yeah. had a great result and, you know, it links everything together. But, exactly. uh, yeah, people want to do that. Big up Kurdish, big up uh, Usam. I've got no problem with it. They spend their money and want to support the club the way of they course. want to support it. got no issue with it, right? So, but John W. Henry don't give a shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, I don't, I don't even know if he knew that happened. No. Nah. I'm going to someone told right him. I, someone might have told him, got a picture of him because it, it, it was the biggest game in, in English football. It's worldwide viewing. The worldwide viewing figures for Liverpool Man United are probably the biggest out of any Premier League game, right? And he's probably seen a picture of it, like FSG at clock in. He's probably like, what he's probably thinking most of all is like, right, there's maybe a tiny bit of heat on us here. Jurgen yeah. is, is the face of this football club. Jurgen is the face of this football club. He's the Messiah. 100%. Everyone loves him, yeah. That's that's put the heat on Jurgen, right? And like, this, I'm not saying they should do this, by the way. But the way they're going to do it is go right, Jurgen. You want these players, right? We're going to get you these players, yeah. And then if Jurgen doesn't succeed next season when he's got his players, <laughs> the heat will transfer to Jurgen. FSG are not stupid, right? And I'm not saying this is correct or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, yeah. But they're multi-billionaire business people. This is how they think, right? They don't want the heat on them. If they can transfer the heat somewhere else, they will transfer the heat. So they will get the players Jürgen wants, right? Give them to Jürgen. Everyone will look, well, we had a good transfer this summer. Jesus Christ, <laughs> you know? You know? No, no one all of a sudden will beat FSG in. Nope. But what main, what main people's problems is, is that we all, a lot of people argue that Jürgen would do better if he got the money and support that he deserves to, and, and we would start winning things, yeah? Like everyone says, what was Jürgen do? Look what Jürgen would do with money. We'd be unstoppable. Yeah. Well, if they gave him that this summer and <clears> built the squad back up and got rid of the deadwood that everyone wants gone, got decent players to Jürgen who Jürgen publicly wants, got them all, and there you go, and we still finished second and didn't win anything. Yeah. The heat then goes to Jürgen. Do you know what I mean? And... That's why I think, Fozzie, FSG will buy players in the summer. Now, I say they will buy players. But they're not going to dip their hands in their pockets. It's just not the way they work. But the money generated in this football club over the last few years, we're not broke FC, right? All this, this, is, this talk of us being broke is a nonsense. It has to be stopped right now. Yep. We've got piles of cash that we just don't spend, yeah? It's like we're saving for a Lamborghini, but we're not feeding the kids. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That is, 100%. 100%. You know, the kid, kid, kids got beans on toast every meal, every, every day of the week. Man. We're saving for that Lamborghini, yeah? Right? And yeah. Uh, so Liverpool got money. They got cash. And I think with the players leaving in the summer, the wages coming off the football club, I think they were, I think they will release players as well, uh, sell players for cash as well. That generates a lot of money. We're money generated. I think Liverpool mm -hmm. will spend big in the summer, but it's not going to be out of their pockets, if that makes sense. Of course, and we're, 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 we're finishing the league as well. You know what I mean? That counts, the money from the mm -hmm. Premier League. You know what I mean? So, a lot of money will come in, and a lot of players are going away, like Jamie said, and money will come out from their wages like towards the other players. But this is the FSG. You know what I mean? It, it, like you said, Jamie, I, I listened to you before when you said, what... When you watch the press conference of Jurgen Klopp, you've got to watch it from the start to the finish. Don't go through midway like other people do and then start judging what they say. I've, li I've listened to you, Jamie. I've watched the Crystal Palace one. He said it. Next summer, we're going to be getting players in. But we have to sell to buy. He said yep. that. It came out of his mouth, people. 
Watch back that Crystal Palace interview, uh, the, the pre-interview, and you'll say the same thing. That's what he said, we have to sell to buy. So he knows what he's working under. And this is what I said, this is what worries me. Are we going to go back to that? Who are we going to sell, Jamie, first of all? Salah? <laughs> who's, there? Who's, who's got resale value here? Like, who are we going to sell? See, that, that, that's my thing with Jota. <laughs> that's why I brought Jota up <laughs> earlier. Because if there is a forward Liverpool guy to sell this summer, I think it would be Jota out of all of them. Oh, damn. Because he's the one, if you think about it, if you sit here and think about it, really, Jota's the only one that don't really fit in at the moment. And who fits Lewis... in for Newcastle? Yeah, like you said. a Jota type. Luis Diaz is guaranteed to play left wing if he's fit, right, in my yeah. opinion. Darwin Nunes is the new kid on the block for almost... Look, you only got to go on what Darwin Nunes or Benfica will make if Liverpool is successful in his contract. You know, yeah. he's up to 100 million euros. He ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Gakpo's got nowhere. He's a new boy in town as well. You know, and Mo's Mo. Jota's yeah. the one that actually doesn't fit at the moment. I think mm -hmm. Klopp would obviously don't want him to let him go, right? But if there's anyone in that forward <laughs> line that Liverpool might sell, you know, I know Bobby's leaving for a free, big up Danny. I know Bobby's leaving for free and that, that, that releases wages off the wage bill as well. So, that is a big thing because we do need them wages down, by the way. Yeah, 100%. Our wage... the I think the second, isn't it? I yeah, our wages the are too highest. high because yeah. it's all bonus related. Apparently, yeah. FSG do this everywhere that, of all their sports yeah, uh, yeah. franchises, apparently. They put so much bonus stuff and apparently it's easily attainable bonuses as well. It's like Murray only has to score 15 goals a season, you know, and he gets like <laughs> 50 grand a week on his contract or something like that. It's like, it's so... They're all easy bonuses. I remember when Bobby had a goal scoring bonus. Yeah, like yeah, he did. Yeah, I remember, ten yeah. goals to score it, ten goals mm -hmm. a season. Yeah, it. There's such easy bonuses. That's why. I, that's but why. But it's I, smart though, I, Jamie. It's, yeah, smart it's smart because, because it actually it's motivates players. the players. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There you go. Exactly, and <laughs> they're the, smart, the, mate. I mean, that that's a good business plan. I'm not going to knock them for it. You know. Because if you take Liverpool's standard wages, it's not that high, yeah? It's a decent wage, don't get me wrong. I think the average wage standardly for Liverpool Football Club is 140 grand a week. Yeah. Right? That's the average standard wage. Mm -hmm. But on top of all of it, like it's, all the players get so many bonuses. So much. So and what you've got to remember, it's not a weekly thing, guys. It's a, 12, it's a yearly thing. Now, wages, when they do it financially, are, be, are based on yearly, yearly growth. It's not based on what a player gets a week. Mm -hmm. So when you come up to the yearly turnaround, you know, which is usually around March, April time for the tax years. That's when you see the financials come out. That's why Liverpool's wage bill is so high. So now high, people yeah. go, why is it the third highest in the league or the fifth <laughs> highest in Europe? That makes no sense, you know. We've got Jota on 90 grand a week. How can we have that? It's because Jota, at the end of the year, probably averaged 180 grand a week. Yeah. You know, with, with, with the, bonuses the bonuses added onto yeah. his contract. And don't forget, guys, imagine the bonuses they all got for last season. I mean, them more, more or less were, undefeated. More or less yeah. undefeated the whole season. Don't forget them that, bonuses for last season oh, this... were probably huge. That is why a salary is so high, guys. They're not taking. It's not. They're not. They're not fiddling the salary thing on the paperwork. They're, it's literally that high because the easy bonuses they attempt. Now we have got to get that wage bill down. I think yeah. I've heard someone out of the club talk about this that they've got to get the wage bill down somehow. So getting rid of a lot of these players that are leaving are on big wages yeah mm -hmm. with their i think they're going apparently next season as well they're going to get rid of the um easy attainable bonuses as well that's oh, wow. something they're, that's something they're looking at getting rid of as well and i think i think it's time we did that as well get rid of their easy attainable bonuses um basic wages go again next summer the liverpool need midfielders as we know i personally think we're only going to buy two midfielders because I think the club now sees Stefan Bajic as that third midfielder wow. they would have had to buy. Because <laughs> Stefan, for me, I don't think would have ever played for Liverpool if Tushimeni if came. Was... Like, if Tushimeni came in the summer, right? Tushimeni came in the summer. We didn't have the injury issues. I don't think Stefan gets in the team. Stefan's got. We got lucky with Stefan coming into the team because of the issues around the club. Yeah, and Stefan's plonked himself in. A bit like Rashford at United. Rashford only ever played for United because all the forwards were injured. I and, remember um, that. And Fingy didn't have uh, any other choice, so he had to bring in Rashford and he's never looked back. It's one of them things. Sometimes you get lucky as a manager. 
No, you're not always just world class. You're lucky. And, at the and same owners. Time. And owners. Yeah, and, and owners, exactly. <laughs> Don't have Ferg- to spend. So yeah. Ferguson didn't always. No, Ferguson had the class of 92. You know, he, he had that brought in. He didn't have to spend any money, you know. You don't. You, well, what was the saying? You don't win anything with kids. Remember, yeah, Alan it, Hansen. That's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, he had to apologise for that. Didn't he? he had to apologise after that. Oh man! But I, I do see Stefan as the third midfielder, I, I, and I think they go by two more. And I think one of them. Who would you want as, as as the two midfielders? Obviously, Bellingham is one of them. But who's the other one that you want? Bellingham and uh, Mateus Nunes are my two. That's the other two. I, I want Casado, mate. I think Casado is the legs, mate. I what think he's want? the one that can help. That can help Fabinho in that midfield. And like you said, we need, we need another six, number six as well. You, you need forget a, about you that. need a quality six. You need a yeah. quality six. I just don't think we'll go buy six in the summer. That's, what, that's my that's my worry. I think they see Stefan as the double pivot player with Fabinho. Man, I, I think we're know. changing. I think I think we're changing next season. I think we're going to a more four-two-three-one formation next season. I say, I, I say Casado because. Um, he should have won in, it, in January. He actually uh, split the W, didn't he? He, he wanted to leave. All of a sudden, he signed a new contract. Like, how? You know what I mean? And um, from what I've heard in the summer, Liverpool went in for him, but um, Brighton said, we, we haven't got the adequate uh, replacement for him, so you have to wait. So we waited. And then, uh, unfortunately, a lot of teams went in for him if you, in January. Uh, but... They haven't sold him, so we still got a chance. I think we could still take a chance. What I like about him, he's he's the ilk of like a one album. He could run up and down that pitch. He's mm. he, he slide tackles. He could pass the ball, and and he's energetic, which we're missing at the moment. Because if you look at our midfield since one album has left, and he's always fit as well, we haven't had that player, bro. We haven't had a fit, consistent player in that midfield, and. That's, that's the disadvantage. And I've, uh, listen, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of play. There's a lot of fans that actually said see you later, one them at the time as well. But you know, like you don't, like I've always said, you won't know how that 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 becomes a hole until that player is gone. And now we know, like since one them has left, we haven't replaced him in that position. You know what I mean? So I think Casado is the one, Jamie. Man, we have to go by or any means necessary to get him, man. Uh, Seventy-five million, just pay it, pay the damn thing, man. I like to say, though, how much do you think it's going? Because he's just signed a new contract. So apparently what I've heard and what I've read is that the Casado deal he's just signed still doesn't mean he's not leaving in the summer. He pushed, I it, think, he pushed it. Yeah, I think what I think what Bayern Munich, uh, Bayern Munich, <laughs> Bruce <laughs> Adult, uh, not even Bruce Dortmund, Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> I think what Brighton have done is like rewarded him for what he's done. So they gave him a new deal because apparently he's only on three grand a week. I don't know if that's true. But it could be where they bought him from, how cheap it was. It could be something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think and, like that, yeah. and they gave him a brand new deal to reward him for his what he's done for the club, and you know, and staying. I mean, yeah. I don't know if it was all him staying, but he never. I don't think he ever really pushed hard enough to leave anyway in January. And well, he didn't I, play, did he? He didn't play. No, he, he, he was dropped a couple of times. I think he dropped general. him, but he did. You know, he's playing back in now, and he seems quite happy yeah. and like you know. I don't think it calls too much of a fuss. It's not like he left and went and knocking on doors like a certain player did once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's the, so it probably rewarded him with that, gave him a thing, and then I think they're back in their, back in their cells as well. They might even put a release clause in there. I'm not sure. Yeah. But I think with a new deal, all it does, you know, is go, right, it's 70 to 80 million for Casado. If it's not that, he stays at Brighton. I, I, yeah. I think that's what it is. And it's who's going to buy him. You know, yeah. Arsenal... See, if Arsenal... Look, Arsenal if Arsenal win the league, it would be a different story, wouldn't it, Jamie? Let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, I, I think Arsenal need a new midfielder. I, don't, I know Shaka and Partey are a partnership at the moment, but they haven't got anything underneath that of good enough quality. They've got the Vieira kid, but I don't think he's that good. He look, I, don't, he, I don't know about you. It doesn't impress me. If he was that good, he'd be playing. He's That's telling it. me he can't... You know, Shaka's playing in the form of his life right now. I've always said about Saka. I thought about you, JB. Like before this team, I've always said Saka had the potential to be better than what he is. It, it was just the team hey. around him that made him look bad. Do you get what yeah, I'm saying? I've, I've always, I've always read. Play, play players in a system that suits them. They play well. Yeah, I, I've always said that. You get play, like you watch Saka for Switzerland. He's always decent. You know, because yeah. they, you know, you build, put players into a system that suits them and position that suits them and put some, you know, part A next to him. You know, he looks decent, but. Yeah, Vieira kid, yeah, I'm glad we didn't buy him there. He, he don't look up to it, nowhere near up to it. <laughs> um I don't think he's any I don't think he's much better than RV Elliott, to be perfectly no, honest. Not really. No. And um 
so I look at Arsenal, look at Caicedo. I still think that is probably the most likely case. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think Man United are in for a kind of player. Um, Spurs got no chance. Um, Man City, I you got Calvin Phillips still there. I don't know what they're doing with him, so I don't see that what being a waste. That either. was man. I don't know about you. I thought that was a waste. You know what I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't understand why they went, even went for him in the first place. I didn't rate him that highly. I thought if you go get anyone, get a Declan Rice. I could see Declan yeah. Rice at City. Um, money. So, so Kate Sago is there. Now, it's just up to live for what they do. I would go, I, I just feel like they think like uh, Fabinho is going to get another year, in my opinion. Um, he's just not mobile, though. That's the thing with him, I, Jamie. Like, I, I, but he had, like, but I love what you said the other day, though. Like, it made me think what you said. It like it should be the team that's carrying him. He should hmm. be carrying the team. He should be the enforcer. He should be the leader of that midfield. But yes, like all of a sudden he's playing, you know what I mean? Because he's got the midfield around him. What about when those players are not there? You know what I mean? We need him more than, more than anything. Like, yeah, he's not mobile, mate. But yeah, I think we need a six. We need a guy who could play six as well, man. Um, thinking about more, more, like we said, more, more, more mobility. So someone's going to run that, that, that midfield. Like, it, 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 like, like what Casemiro does, but better. You know what I mean? Not like after the last game, but better than what Casemiro does. Uh, yeah. I, I, with Fabinho, it's just yeah, it shouldn't be the team that's carrying him. I, I think I thought about what you said, Jamie. You was hundred percent right in that, hundred million percent, mate. I think with Fabinho as well, he'd have great games still, right? Like he did against Man United. Yeah. I thought he had, it, I thought he was tremendous. I think he, was he perfect, got his he key. Was he, was glad his, he got his key back and was glad home. You know, like, that's what. You know, he, he put in good performances, but he will do that. There will be performances where you look at Fabinho. Oh, he has still got it, and then the, the following week he'd be like, ah. Uh, See, I think Fabinho, till the end of the season now, will probably perform quite well. I actually do. Mm-hmm. I think the team are in quiet. I think Klopp's got the team. I know we lost 5-2, I, but I've, I've been seeing it last six weeks. Little bits of the old Liverpool coming back, yeah? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I've been seeing little tiny bits. I know performance has not been great. The Palace game was dreadful and things like that. But I've been seeing little pieces where oh, the old Liverpool is starting to come back. We always have a strong finish to seasons. Now, after January, February time, usually after February, Liverpool do sort of like go on a run. That's always yeah. happened. So I think Fabinho end the season strong. I think the ownership and Klopp and the scouting to everyone's just got to look at it and go, is Fabinho going to give us that again next year or is he going to fall yeah. off again? If Are we going to trust him to be our number six for one more season? Or is he going to fall off halfway through the season we wish we brought a number six? I think that's where they're going to look. But mm-hmm. I think the club feel like let's just get players around him and we'd be fine. That's why I think Harvey Elliott works really well alongside him because he's that mobility. Stefan works well alongside him because he's that mobility. It just young, you know, young and energetic. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they get they, back. And, and we've gone back to the way Klopp likes playing. When that midfield is all about high energy again. You now winning yeah. the ball back, it's getting in, getting into half spaces, getting the press on the opposite midfield. You now they're starting to do that again. And you know, I think Fabinho and I know there was a, a a thing last season that Thiago and Fabinho never lost a game together. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah, there was there was that. Yeah, but they always caused issues when they played <laughs> together at the same time because when they played together, they're not very mobile, and that's the problem. We always concede a lot of chance. I know we didn't lose a game of them together in the Premier League last mm-hmm. season, but with them playing, we conceded a lot of chances at the same time. Yeah, and. It worked, you know. It worked for us because we won games and competed and all that. But you could see there was an issue still, you yeah. know. And you need something else there. So you got Thiago to think about. He ain't going nowhere. Mm-hmm. He's got a year left in his contract next season. What do we do about that as well? You know. Um, Hen- what Elliot, would you do, Jamie? I, would, you, would you keep him? I say, why not keep him a little I, bit longer? I, I, it's a quality footballer. I for don't know experience why. purpose. You know what I mean? Because Milner, Milner, Milner's not going to last long, is he? So it's, it's no. almost over for Milner now. I've always said it with, with Thiago. He's not, he doesn't have to play 30 games a season. No, he doesn't. Right? If, T, if we sign Thiago up, he only plays 20 to 25 games a season, right? Yeah. But none of that is because of injuries. Then I'd keep Thiago. You know, you don't yeah. have to play him. It's a special occasion player, you know? The luxury. big games, you know? That luxury player. You know, um, Bring them on as a sub as well. There's nothing wrong with it. Thiago don't have to start games. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. If it's nil nil in a game, we've got half hour left. Let's bring Thiago on, unlock a bit of magic. You know, that's what a squad's there for. Exactly. You know, that's what you should need. So I would keep Thiago. 
I can see the club keeping Fabinho. You've got Stefan Bajic there, who I think the club sees as their third choice midfielder now. And then you've got the two that go by in the summer. Mm-hmm. I think Mateus Nunes, I just think Mateus Nunes is joining Liverpool. Do you like uh, Mateus Nunes? What do you think of him? I've watched him a few times. I, I, he hasn't set me alight, like, like, like the world alight from what I've no. seen. No. Uh, when I watched him before he left to go to Wolves, I saw him a few times. I thought, well, yeah, he's a bit of a player, you know. He can get around the pitch. He's got good ball. He's got good close ball control. He can find the pass. Mm-hmm. He can run with the ball. Um, you know, he can move with the ball importantly. He can defend quite well. And then when he went to Wolves, I was like, I can understand why everyone's like, nah, this guy's shit, man. I don't know what everyone's <laughs> talking about. But then Wolves are shit at the same time. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, when we got Jota in and everyone was going, why are you buying Jota? Wolves fans were like, yeah, you can have him. Thank God for that, you know. And sometimes mm. Jota weren't even playing for Wolves. He was on no. the bench sometimes. I remember, yeah. And then we yeah. get him in and it's like, you really like wish this player was gone now. I think some, do you know, the, the, the Nunes stuff, the Mateus Nunes stuff reminds me of Mascarano at West Ham. So when Mascarano and Tevez went to West Ham because it was part of the agent. Trying Agency, to get yeah. Big, the agent, I think it was Kia, Jack, Kia, weren't it? Trying to get him a big... Mm-hmm contract at a Man United, Liverpool or Arsenal or Chelsea. That's what he was looking yeah. at. Get him in the worldwide market because they're out in South America. Quality footballers. Mm-hmm. They got him to West Ham. They went to West Ham. Tevez was the, the better player at the time. And Mascarano was in and out. He weren't really contributing. He weren't always playing. And Liverpool bought him in that January. Liverpool went and bought him in that January. And he was just outstanding for us. And then Tevez was the hero because Tevez... You know, Tevez is a cult legend there because he kept them up, didn't he? And then he, yeah, and, he did, and, yeah. like, and then he went to Man City. It reminds me of that. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Mateo Nunes is a very, very good footballer. He's, he can use his right hand, left foot. Uh, he's mm-hmm. technically gifted, as we said. We want technically gifted players. If he's going to be in the region of forty odd million pound, I think go and get him. I, I think go and get him. That sort of player let, let, lets Thiago rest. Well, the you know advantage, I mean? uh, the advantage, uh, the advantage we have on, on most teams uh, next season, if he comes and Bellingham comes in, is the height as well. I mean, these are yeah. like you, you look at our forward line now; they're, they're all big people. Like you know, mm. what I mean, like they, they they will look frightening in, 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 uh, when, when opponents watch us and things like that. So the height difference has gone like slightly higher, uh, like in, in Liverpool, if, if we get these type of players, and uh, you know, like, we're going to concede a lot of goals from set pieces. That's for sure, Jamie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah like, like you said, technical players with hard-working players next season. That's the way to go. And we could prolong their careers at Liverpool with that as well. Yeah, but yeah, like I said, I don't know nothing about Mateus Nunes. I see him sometimes. Maybe he's preparing himself for Liverpool Football Club eventually. Maybe that's what it is. That's why they're playing him on and off. Um, but I, I trust your judgment. Like, I, I hope it's, he's as good as what you think he is. Oh, I, really it, I, 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 I think he's gone to a club that he don't give a shit about. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? He, he, he's <laughs> gone to get. He's basically gone like. It, if he's gone to there just for getting the shop window sort of thing, you know, like, like Div Okarigi when he went on loan to Wolfsburg, weren't he? I think it was. Yeah. And he had a torrid time. He was terrible that year. Oh, it was season. awful. Because he didn't want to be there because he wanted to come back to Liverpool. He didn't want to go on loan. So he didn't perform to the standards he's capable of. You know, and I think Nunes is just like, he, he's going to be in the shop window and show, look, this is what I can do. I remember that hug he had with Klopp and them words they were exchanging the other week. I was like, yeah, it's like, it's, 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 I think Klopp going, <laughs> just hold in, hold in there, hold in there. I ain't going to be too much longer than we, you know. And I, it, it just reminds me of that and I, I think he's a decent player, man. And in a Liverpool system under Jurgen Klopp, he's a far, far better manager yeah. than he's got right now. We'll get the best out of him. Yeah. I, there's quality there that I can improve our midfield. There's there's no doubt about it in the way we play. And we, we, we need technical players. We need work rate players. We need a mixture of all that in our squad for different game days. One game yeah, day 100%. might require one game day might acquire a, a workhorse midfield. One game mm-hmm. day might acquire a technical midfield because we're playing against a low block. You know, it'd be you know, so we need that squad and uh, like sometimes what do we struggle against? Deep line defending teams. We have we yeah, have that so, option next season. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Because we're because we're, we've got a workhorse midfield. They're not. No. Mm-hmm. What what is a workhorse midfield guy do against a low block team? It's just like, right. They're Pointless. not pressing us and all that. It's like, what do we do here? We're, we're just exactly. we're running around and passing the ball <laughs> everywhere. But you know, but no we one's going anywhere. Yeah. So there's no half space or no space in behind. So there's nothing we can do. Stick a couple of technical players in there. And they're like, 
give us the ball, we can move forward, we can find the path. You remember a couple of, was it? The the, the COVID season when the Shakiri came on and Jota, that through ball, yeah. straight to yeah, the, yeah, things yeah. Like, that's technical, that's technical, technical. ability, yeah, it's best. Exactly. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. Um, so yeah, players like that would suit me. Uh, I think Jude, I know everyone's getting on Jude tonight. Oh, I've seen on the timelines, everyone's getting on Jude <laughs> because he didn't have a great performance against Chelsea. It's just I mean, what game. do you want him to do, man? Do you want to be Superman? I don't know if anyone noticed, but Dortmund was shit. They were crap. <laughs> they, were, <laughs> they were terrible. They were playing like three, one, six. I don't know what formation like that. that was. Uh, it was just like, oh, that's all just, but that's was at six players up front and <laughs> not defend. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah, the penalty shouldn't have been a penalty. And the encroachment, I still haven't seen it yet. Have yeah. you seen this encroachment yet? I have, I have. I haven't seen anything apart from what I've, I've seen at the end of the game. Like, oh, the Dort- I, did, I didn't know what Dortmund was playing. I don't think they knew what they were doing, and everybody oh. blaming uh, Jude Bellingham for it. Like, he, like, like Jamie said, he's not Superman. Van Dijk doesn't have good games all the time. You know what I mean, you do have that odd bad games. You know, we all play football. We know that. I mean, so um, don't don't rest your uh, hopes on one game. <laughs> he no, will exactly. play better eventually. He will play better. Um, the thing with Jude, I've been saying it for a while now. I still wouldn't be shocked if Jude stays at Dortmund next season. It, 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 it still wouldn't shock me. I think there's talk about it today. Mm-hmm. That Jude might, Jude's in no hurry. The young man, yeah. Uh, and what, he's only 19, isn't he? So, British 20, Dortmund, 19? Can, British, British Dortmund can win the league yet. Yeah. I think they're three That's points. Crazy. I mean, they could win the Premier League, uh, their league, sorry. Uh, so Bundesliga. If he wins the Bundesliga, I mean, he's got another year. He's been 20. You know, it's not, he's in no rush, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure you know, the financial package is on at Dortmund. I, I, game. Jamie, I, I think clubs had a word with him. I think, I think they got him. I, I don't know, man. I don't normally put my hopes on things. It's just the way we're going about things. I think they've got him, mate. I honestly think that people like, uh, <sighs> You don't you don't sacrifice a season as we did this season if you haven't got a player like that in mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's going to dominate that midfield for the next 10 years, probably become a captain for Liverpool Football Club around that time as well. And, you know, like his parents apparently want him to play for Liverpool. So I think, and not only that, you people are forgetting who's the Dortmund guy, Jurgen Klopp. He doesn't normally go for Dortmund players, does he? But maybe this time, because Man City keep approaching those players at Dortmund, he said enough is enough. Why are we making Man City better? Why can't we make ourselves better? I worked hard for that team to get where they are and they're approaching the players, I, uh, the, the actual system I set up. You know what I mean? So he might have just said enough is enough. Maybe it's time to get a player like that in, in his team. Yeah, uh, I agree. I, I, yeah, I think it's sacrificed too much this season for them not to get a player like that, J- Jamie. Well, Belling, so the, the whole talk is, is that last season Liverpool were very close to getting too many. The yeah, whole yeah, 100%, yeah. I, I actually do believe Liverpool tried to get Liverpool were going to get Darwin Nunes and too many in one transfer window, yeah. right? That was the yeah. whole that was the whole thing. They were going to get them to and everyone would be like, shit. <laughs> if Mbappe weren't a selfish piece of shit and actually left and went to Real Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> ruined everything. Ruined everything. Yeah. Um, there's another Sad, I, I, I think Bellingham was the B choice. I think what they had in their mind was they're going to get two Shemeni because he was going to be the Fabino cover. I think they already knew the Fabino yeah, decline yeah. was coming, right? So two Shemeni was going to be that sort of Fabino cover, yeah? And then I honestly think they thought next summer we'll just mm-hmm. get Joe Bellingham. It'll be Bellingham and nothing else next summer. Then you've got Bellingham and two only, Shemeni in Bro, our, It only in takes a word from Klopp, doesn't it? It only takes a word yeah. from Klopp to the president of Dortmund. At, and and then they tried, they tried to get him this summer, but Dortmund said he ain't available this summer. Yeah. And so Liverpool... That's why Liverpool didn't go any for anyone because Klopp was like, I know my financial backing I have. Yeah. Right? Because we've got to remember, Klopp ain't a stupid man. You yeah. know, I've always said it. I think Klopp actually liked the way FSG run a football club. Yeah, Cause yeah, if yeah. you Because if you listen to Jurgen Klopp talk about non-football related manners, he's mm-hmm. very socialist. He's very left-wing, ain't he? And, yeah, yeah. You know, I think he actually likes the way FSG run a football club. But he's now like, I like the way you run, but the problem is, the world is getting richer and richer and richer yeah. and we can't, we have to, you know, we have to unfortunately go to that level as well. Next we know level, I, yeah. don't, I don't particularly like it. I don't think Klopp likes it personally. 
Yeah, well, but, he said, I, I will never buy a hundred yeah, per player. He said that. Yeah, he, doesn't, all... he doesn't like it, but he's got no yeah. choice now. This is the problem because average yeah. players are going for like 50 million. Yeah. You know, and you've he, he got, he got no choice in the world we are. So I think he thought, right, if I can't get Bellingham, if I can't get, t- t- he's gone. I want Jude. So I don't want no one else. Right, I'll yeah. go with what I've got because I know I ain't going for financial backing. If I get someone now, it's going to take out of Jude money. Yeah. So that's why I think Liverpool are going to get Jude no matter what. And, uh, and I think we have to now. I don't, got no choice. Got, I don't think we've got a choice because the way we're playing, the way we're bigging this transfer up, we can't let him go to Man City. Uh, people, uh, no, you know, a lot of people don't know. Like when Klopp has a break, he goes back to Dortmund. He actually goes has yeah. lunch with the with the president down there and all that stuff. So he actually goes down there and speaks to them. So we don't know what's happening behind closed doors. So that's why that's why in my head I'm thinking he's done. It's done, bro. Like. I think we we'll need to stop wasting our time with him and just look elsewhere for other players. With the Tuchemini thing, the, the worst thing we've done in that transfer is something we've never done before that's announced it publicly. That's what we've done wrong. Normally, we keep everything in-house and Tuchemini one, we just told everyone we're going to get him and then that's why Real Madrid pounced. That's what I think, okay. Jamie. Yeah, and, and, look, and Klopp admitted it himself. He went, yeah. the, player we want, the player we wanted went to Real Madrid. Yeah. You know, you so, go. I mean, uh, uh, he said it himself, so... Uh, there's another player that's a free transfer as well this summer that Liverpool apparently very keen on. Uh, it is Kameda, I believe I say, you say his name. Uh, yeah, uh, Kameda, who plays for in the Bundesliga right now. It's a free transfer in the summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, uh, Blinder saying Liverpool are very, very keen on him. Apparently, Liverpool had scouts watching him this season already. <laughs> Rate him as a player? Mate, I, I don't know much about him, but I won't be surprised because, you know, our owners, they love their, you know, Asian market and things like that. They want to, like, scatter around their, their commercial side of things. So they do look at, you know, like, we had um, uh, the Asian players in the past as well. So we, we might have to go back in there in order for us to, you know, you know, get the commercial side going as well. But I don't know much about him, mate. I have no idea. I've never heard of this player ever. But I won't be surprised knowing the FSG. Free transfer, right. Asian market. He, 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 is a, he is a decent player. He is a decent player, to be fair. Um, so, there's this news article going around about what John W. Henry said. It's got a lot of people. <laughs> E-dog, shall we say. So, Liverpool principal owner John W. Henry has retained his view that the Premier League should face limits on their spending to prevent competition being monopolised by the same clubs as in other European leagues. Now, this has gone down like a brick in a pool. Um, a lot of people are saying he's just saying that so he doesn't have to spend money, which mm-hmm. might be the case. I always, In this article, though, I I do agree in little bits what he's saying. I, I, I think spending is getting a little out of control, just for my taste. This is 100%. What he's talking. I think spending is getting out of control. When Chelsea have spent more money than any clubs combined in Europe, in Europe, in two transfer windows, you've got to look at it and go, right, maybe there just needs to be a little pullback here because, look, West Ham are spending more money than some Spanish clubs, yeah? But they're yeah. not winning things like the Spanish clubs are. No, you know? no they're not. So you, you've got uh, how much money is potentially being wasted that then messes up the whole financial thing in the English football, you know, and it, it's a difficult one, this, because one, you know, is coming out with this and people are saying, right, it's just a reason for him not to buy anyone. It's another reason why he wants the Super League and Caps. You know, it's American owners not understanding football. But there's a lot, you know, it, there's a lot of European leagues that do have spending caps. No, listen. I, I, listen. I don't agree with a lot of things the manager, say, sorry, the owner says, but I, I've always said that in the Premier League, what, what did we, what did we create it for in the first place? Fair playing field, right? That's what they said in '92, yeah. Jamie. Remember? That's what they yeah. said. That's what they created it for. When, when has it ever been fair playing field? You're always going to get owners that's going to be look at Manchester United now. They're going to hope. Well, they might, they might get a Qatari owners eventually. I mean, look at Man mm. City. How can you compete with things like this? Like, how can you make the league competitive? It, it, which is, it, you, can't, you can't say it's competitive because in the last, what is it, since, tw- tw- so, uh, since 1992, 
about five or six teams have won the Premier League compared to the old first division when Leeds, teams like Leeds United, Derby County, London Forest, Aston Villa used to win it. You know what I mean? That's the difference in, in, in quality now. And I agree with him in that. We have to have a cap, otherwise it's going to spiral out of control to the point that is already happening in the lower leagues. Uh, teams are going to be bankrupt, you know, to, to stay up with these teams. And that's what we don't want. We don't want like, famous clubs to be bankrupt eventually because they have to keep up with the likes of, you know, Manchester City, Newcastle, uh, Manchester United, Liverpool and, you know, Arsenal and things like that. Uh, like I said, we need to make this league competitive. That's why it's the best league in the world. But the way it's going at the moment is spiral out of control. And I agree with him with that one, 100%. They need to make a cap on that. Yeah, the spending is mad. Now, people are just going to say, that I I understand it when people say, like, he's just saying that so, you know, he can bring everyone down into it. Look, I think, is it the Accrington Stanley owner once said, there's two mm. ways of funding a football club. One is self-sustain, you only spend what you earn. Yes. And the other one is, and the other one is getting an oil owner. That yes. Just spe- that then spends what they earn plus more on But top. you can be both, can't you, though, Jamie? You can yeah, be both. Yeah. So sustain and you have some money aside in case you need to spend it in, in case yeah. of like a, a COVID or something happens to you. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. Which we don't have. This is what frustrated all of us. During the COVID season, we didn't get nothing out of our pocket to spend because we were furloughing our staff and then we slowly declined. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But you look at other clubs, even during COVID, they were still spending, but they're still up there. They're still there. Mm. That's the difference. Yeah. That's what people are getting frustrated with FSG. Well, if like I've said this for a while now, like everyone said, well, look at how much West Ham spent last summer and all that. And like I keep saying, like if West Ham don't get into, like, they spent that much to get into Europe again, right, to compete yeah. where they were. If they don't make that, they're going to be in trouble financially. Yeah. It's just they are. And now yeah. West Ham are fighting relegation with all that money spent <laughs> and wages yeah, they're spending crazy. on. So West Ham could be in financial trouble next season yeah. right especially if they get relegated a lot of their players will leave you know the contracts they've got players on will have to come down and things like that there'll be a financial issue I think they got rid of, they're getting rid of parachute payments as well so you know, but why they, bit, Jamie why are they spending that money because they're comp- trying to compete with the rest they're That's trying to compete yeah. and yeah. stay where they were <laughs> exactly. and they're trying to compete with everyone in front of them mm-hmm. to keep you know West Ham are a big club in the eyes of West Ham fans you know so they want to be in that top 10 in the Premier League exactly. every single year. So they've got to spend to that. And because mm-hmm. the price, because the money being spent in the Premier League is now so high, teams like West Ham and Nottingham Forest and things like that are spending so much money just to climb maybe two places in the league. Yeah. It, if you think about it, deep down, it's <laughs> balmy. It's absolutely balmy. Now, you and me are older fans, so we might yeah. see this differently to the, not a, a lot of new generation yeah. fans. I'm not in... And by the way, I'm not insulting anyone by that either. But no, that's not you know, yeah. you know, it, it, the new generation fans will want you know the big, the new toys, the, the, yeah. the money, and all that. And you know, it's fashionable because you grow up in a world now where you know women sell their bodies on Instagram, make so much <laughs> money, and everyone wants to be an influencer and yeah. you know go around the world in their bikinis and speedos and just post it on Instagram, <laughs> make money and stuff like that. It's the way the world is. So I don't yeah. blame people. Either. I don't blame anyone. Really every, don't. Every era has its turn in it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm not saying if she are right in what they're saying at all. You know, he's saying it probably from a selfish point of view where it means that like, it's a level playing field and all that because he can't compete. He's him basically admitting, I can't compete with Man United yeah. Man City financially. Just say it, admit it. That's what he's saying, right? But I do think, you know, when I talk about the other teams, and he's not talking about his John W. Henry, he's no. not thinking of West Ham and all that. He's being no. selfish, yeah. yeah he's talking course. from his he's talking from his own selfish point of view. Where I'm talking about a point of view where I am looking at the other clubs. I've been saying this for a while. I said this about West Ham in the summer. I said, well, I spent a lot of money. If they don't make Europe, they're in trouble. Yeah, they're in trouble. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Nottingham Forest get relegated, I know it's showing. Their owner is showing ambition yeah and i get it i'm all out all for ambition not in the forest get relegated they're in massive trouble yeah. yeah massive trouble they probably won't because of the players they've got now and might just keep them up and it would take them a long time to come back to the premier league as well exactly and, watch you know, out for I, that people i worry about the financial issue in the english game right now chelsea spending 600 million <laughs> and and in two transfer windows and then putting players on eight year deals that's crazy apparently man. No one knew this was a loophole. Of course they did. No one wanted to put own players on eight-year deals. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the difference. Who wants to put a player on an eight-year deal? 
Look at Modric. Modric, whatever his name is, came in for 100 million. He looks Does he even average. start games? Does he even get started games? Old man Sterling has got a start in front of him, right? Embarrassing. And, and I'm saying that Sterling's old, but in terms of... No, yeah, he's old. The longevity that Sterling's played for, he's, he's an old boy, even though he's only 28. That's crazy, isn't it? And, and you look at Modric and you're like, it, that's where I'm coming from. 100 million on a player like that is just, for me, is absolutely balmy. And then putting him on an eight-year deal. I mean, it... it, it when you look at that and you've got then teams like Fulham, West Ham, your Brightons, you know, they've got to spend like a hundred million every summer just to stay one position above where they finished. Yeah. But and, 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 and then and then you look madness. at us, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then you look at us, we spend like thirty million, fifty million and all that stuff and we still compete. And we still compete for yes. the title. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just it's it's a finite the league is a financial mess, in my opinion, and I don't think it's right. So anyone thinking I'm sticking up for FSG, I'm not. No, 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 what, no. What, I agree. what John Henry is saying is correct in the terms of the league is out of control spending wise, but he's saying it from a selfish point of view, where I'm saying yeah. it from a, a a point of view where it is out of control. But it's you know the teams down there that are having to spend so much money just to compete is pathetic. You know, did did did, did the mad. Premier League get someone in though, Jamie, like to control things like this eventually? Yeah, I think he's spending as well. I think he's just spending as well. He's like, yeah, yeah. I've got, I've got like a, <laughs> I've got like a, a black master card there. It's unlimited funding. Yeah, just whack it on the table. Get what you want. Yeah, you know we do I mean? need to get out of control. We do, mate. Yeah, hundred percent right, man. So I do understand, like when Europe look at us and go, I think there is a bit of jealousy there. But at the same time, I think they look at it and go, right, yeah, that spending's that spending's mad. I mean, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's just nuts. So, but look, you can also spend little but buy quality at the same time. Now, I've always been to so one people talk about FSG. I'm always mm -hmm. like, yeah, I get what everyone means by them. I really do right now. I never used to think it, mm -hmm. I honestly didn't because I saw the players coming in and I was like, I look where I always looked when FSG came to Liverpool. They saw yeah. a, a, a massive football club only worth 300 million. Makes, That's crazy, it makes, all, it? makes all the sense in the world to buy them. You go and make your money back straight away. They could sell Liverpool back. They could sell Liverpool the next day and make a profit, right? So it makes all the sense in the world, right? They didn't know nothing about football. And no. Zilch. Yeah, and I remember I, because when they came in, they, <laughs> they, asked, they asked them, do you know anything about Liverpool? No, we just, we know Liverpool because of the Beatles. <laughs> That's what yeah. I said. <laughs> and it, and then you know the, the the brand and all that, and then yeah. they look at they look at the club as a profitable uh, marketing exercise. Yeah. I, I've got no problem with that because I look at the world now as everything's business. You know, hundred percent. So that's the way the world is, yeah. And they didn't know nothing about football. It took them a long time. They kept Damien Camoli in charge of buying players for a few years. That tells you how much they knew about football, right? <laughs> and. Uh, uh, and they kept like Perry around and these old gits that were, yeah. you know, for yesterday and not today, didn't help the club move forward at all, you know. And then they started getting in their guys. Right? FSG, after a certain amount of time, it was under Brendan Rogers when they started to get their guys in. They got the geezer who uh, was the CEO of Xbox. What was his name? Mm, uh, Peter Moore. Yeah, Peter Moore. They got him in, right? Good bit of business. He's also a Liverpool fan. So. You know, he's worked well for the club. He did great on the commercial side of stuff. Mm -hmm. We've got to give him a lot of credit. Yeah. You know, FSG started to get people in under the Brendan Rodgers era. You know, it still didn't quite work out the transfer stuff. Then Michael Edwards slowly took got over the role of being the person in charge. He clashed with Brendan Rodgers because he was buying players in the money ball scheme that suited FSG's way of doing business. He understood it, bought players in. Brendan Rogers didn't understand it because Brendan Rogers got an ego the size of the world and yeah. thinks he knows better than everyone. Couldn't work with a sporting director. <laughs> look, tell you everything about him. He, he played Bobby Firmino at wing back. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean uh, uh, we'll never figure that one. <laughs> uh, and then, and then they got Klopp in. And as soon as they got Klopp in, they got the right man that suited them to a T. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a marriage made in heaven. Let's of face course. it. For both of them. Klopp liked their ownership. He liked the way they worked. They liked the way Klopp worked. 
It was a marriage made in heaven. They wanted Ancelotti, but Ancelotti needs cash, 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 cash. Yeah. That weren't willing to happen. So they got Klopp in. Great marriage. Things started to happen. They started to learn more about the game. Klopp doing his thing. And it worked and it worked beautifully, but it's got to a time now. And they've got good players in. So you look at when Klopp came in and the players we had to you look now. You know, I, I can't argue what the way the club trained, the way the club changed, yeah. you know, especially when Klopp came in, you know, and Michael Edwards was the person in charge of doing stuff. Ian Graham was in charge of analy- analysing the, the, the players yeah. and the data and all that. So I'll, I'll give him credit for all that. But where it stops now is that they've got the best manager in world football. One arguably the best manager in world football. I think he's the yes. best. I think so. Yes, he makes mistakes. I've had a go at him all season. I think he has been poor this year, Jurgen. Yeah. Yeah, tactically. And he yeah. doesn't get away with it, but he's starting. Yeah. But you look at it now, and FSG have just got to give him money. So this summer, for the, it's just huge in my point of view. they just got a. I think they've come to a time, we said it earlier, whatever Jurgen wants. I think the owner should just give him now. Yeah. Yeah, it, with me, um, I agree 100% with what you said. With, with, with the owners, the thing with them was like they've been taking risks for so many years and the risk were paying off. Now the risk has run out. Now it sees what, like, see, we see what's happening. We're struggling at 10th. Now, obviously, we're coming back because of the players that are coming back from injury and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, with, with me, if you don't sort your backroom stuff out first, the on the pitch things ain't gonna work out. Because if you look at Arsenal, they're in the, they were in the same situation as we was in, so as we're in right now. They, they, the backroom stuff wasn't sorted. They had all that issues. The fan base were in disarray. They had arguments with everyone, and then they just worked their way from the backroom stuff all the way to the football pitch. And look how beneficial that became. That's how we was a few years ago. We had everything, like you said, Peter Moore, Liverpool fan, Ma- Michael Edwards, Liverpool fan, people you trust around the, and the, around the club you, that you know they won't share secrets outside the club with other people. That's there, like constant, and they, they're helping you out and you, and you could trust them with everything you have. That's what all, Klopp used to always say, I trust my staff with everything I have. And now that's disappeared. Now you're getting the doctors not there. Uh, the 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 executive the the recruit of the recruitment is, not, is going to be leaving. You got all that in disarray, so it does affect on the pitch eventually because the manager is going to think to himself, "What can I do? Like I'm losing everyone in the backroom staff, so I have to take on everything on by myself for now until we sort that out." Which affected the actual on the pitch performance. If you look at the the season, now we're slowly coming back because the injuries are coming back and we're coming back up to the top of the table because there's competition for places on the pitch. You know what I mean? So in the summer, first of all, sort out your backroom stuff. I'm talking about the executives, the recruitment team, the analyst, everything. And then we could take care of the pitch after that. Because that's the most important thing, like in my opinion. And like I said to you, Arsenal was 12th a couple of seasons ago, James. Remember, they were in the bottom half of the table when they had all that stuff uh, the, uh, like in the background not working out now they've got Edu they've got other people that's uh, around the club that, that's trustworthy and now they're, they're, they're competing in the top of the league the manager has, doesn't have to worry about that backroom stuff he worries about the, the on, on the pitch performance and now it's working out for Arsenal mm-hmm. yeah totally agree totally agree and I like I, I just I could answer uh, Pac-Man's question uh, mm-hmm. genuine questions does the ownership of finance sort not bore you as a fan base yeah it does uh, I guess it's a key issue, but shortly after a while. The only reason we're talking about it today, really, Pat Man, is because there was a big article written in the Echo, which FSG gave an interview to, that uh, came out on Tuesday. That's the uh, really the only reason we're talking about it now, and all the details from that article. Otherwise, yeah, it does, it does bore the absolute toffee out of us. There's no doubt about it. Um, yeah, we just look. The summer, the summer is massive for this football club and as you say things need to be sorted out before the summer as well yeah. we need a sporting director in i've been saying it for a while just go and get uh just go and get um oh what's his name thing you the old man united manager just go and get him uh, man united manager yeah last season um what was his name uh ragnick ragnick yeah because he's a sporting director and he's yeah. um he's great in the uh it, it, that is his world now, he's yeah. not really a manager or a coach. He loves doing the sporting directing work. He's very good in that world. He knows all the good young players. You know, 
look at all the young players he was telling Man United to buy before everyone else bought them as well, yeah, like Jens exactly. Hernandez and stuff like that. He's got a good eye for talent. He's got good talent ID. He's good friends with Klopp. You know they get on. Um, I think it, <coughs> that could, that could be a good that could be a good match. Paul Mitchell apparently is not leaving his post at Monaco now. Also has great talent ID. He's been he was a, I think he was the uh, the uh, the main guy at Southampton when they were buying yeah. all their talent, and then he went to Monaco. And he was the reason. He, I think he found Mbappe, didn't he? And all that yeah. sort of stuff. So he's great in his role. Um, but he's not leaving. Um, I don't know too many other sporting directors. Uh, yeah, it's just... Oh, it's just... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where they're going to find. But they need that sorted before they the end of the season. Uh, Ragnick will be, be Ragnick will be a great actually for Klopp, uh, Jamie. Because if 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 you think about it, Rag, a lot of people say Ragnick uh, taught Klopp a lot of stuff, and Klopp said that I think as well. Like he, he learned a lot from Ragnick. So uh, if them two are in in the same environment, I think it'll be frightening for the rest of the actual like world of football. Because if you have someone in tuned with you in 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 in, in your team, I think like. It's gonna be a, a frightening prospect, in my opinion, mate. And mm. right, 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 like, yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I'll go for him. I'll go for him. He's, yeah, that's he, his field. That's his field. I think that's what Paul's saying. Yeah, it's the only other choice that I look at. Yeah, that's Benfica, Rui Pedro Braz. It, it's it, it has to be done by the end of the season, no matter what, because he know he has to know what his job is in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> He can't take on everything. <laughs> yeah, he, he needs to know what his job is. You know, Klopp can't be sporting director, coach, manager and scout all at the same time. You know, he, everything needs to have their own department and their own department keep to what they're doing, in my yeah. opinion. But yeah, guys, that is going to be it from us. It was a great little chat there. I was talking about all the potential transfers. Just bringing up that FSG uh, article from earlier. Look, the playing thing, what everyone's talking about. Big up Kurdish for setting that yeah, up. Big man. up you getting all the people to pay for that and, you know, on the GoFundMe stuff and all that. Big up to everyone and put their money into it and trying to protest to get the owners out. Just don't link it with the article, guys. You know, it, it, that interview was done way before that that protest <laughs> happened. So, you know, if you're going to blame anyone, blame the Echo that when they released it because yeah. they could have released it any time they wanted and they made sure they released it after a 7-0 win. So, yeah. Blame the echo for that, but otherwise, lots of good stuff talking about there. And guys, so what's going to happen for the rest of the week is I will be back on uh, for what day is it? Today? Wednesday. I'll Wednesday. be back on Friday, guys. I'll be back on Friday. I'm going to do my uh, match preview for the Bournemouth game on Saturday. Then I will be back Saturday e e evening for a match review and a, ma a match reaction to that and player ratings. And then on Sunday, I will do a match preview for the Brighton, uh, the Real Madrid game. And then from Monday to Friday, I'm away. So there won't be no videos between Monday and Friday next week. But then I'll be back the following weekend. Um, Fozzy, anything you got planned, my man? Tell the world. Oh, um, uh, I might do a show tomorrow. Uh, LFC, Red Sport Channel. I might do Let's Talk uh, LFC, another episode. Probably talk about the same thing in regards to FSG, how we could like, improve on uh, the summer. That's what I'm going to do. Try to get some guests on as well. Around 9 o'clock, probably. Around 9 o'clock. Excellent. There you go, guys. There you go. So make sure you go and subscribe to Fozzy's channel, guys. Thank you, mate. Go and give him a shout out. Big up him. <laughs> Where is my. <laughs> I know what Pim was on about there. Be up here. How are you doing well, my man? Guys, thank you very much for joining me and Fozzy and ends from earlier on today. Guys, I appreciate it. Guys, I will be back on Friday with your match preview for Bournemouth. Till then, guys, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy.